This is Chris Redfield. I'm currently pinned down. I don't know how many of them there are. They just keep coming. My entire team's down. I'm doing all I can to survive. I don't think I'm gonna make it. So I... I need to make sure I leave this message. Please. Tell Leon Kennedy. I need him to fuck my sister. I won't be able to be there to make sure it happens, but... Damn it, you make sure that he does... Claire! Sorry, sis. This is all I can do now. What a fucking nigger. Well, good morning, chat. Trying a bit of a different start time for once, rather than 4 and 5 in the morning. Varying it up a little bit. Seeing where we should uh, do Medicare in the morning. When we talk about all these fantastic things like Nigerian scammers, Photon, and of course, Cuck Life. Who's who doesn't love that Cuck lifestyle? A little bit of an update on the Photon situation. Still getting a hold of the higher quality episodes working on a video on it, sent out emails to different cast members, as well as our boy David Stay, Mr. Mandar, waiting to hear back from that. Maybe we get him on the stream to have a interview, talk to him about Sphere of the Lycanthrope, his time on Photon, his time in Japan. Should be fun shit. See how that plays out. Got a 40k uh, stream coming up, too, with Nick Rikita, probably by the end of the month. Not 100% sure what time that's going to be scheduled, but probably in the evening. I doubt it's going to be a 4 a.m. kind of thing. And also, I'll probably throw up a, a video temporarily before the big Photon one. So with the updates out of the way, how is your morning going, chat? How is the day treating you? Is the week going well? It just started. Oh, it's another, it's another week of work ahead of you. It's another week of school ahead of you. Isn't that always fun? As you start ticking off the little, uh, the little boxes with your check marks waiting for the fucking weekend to come because everybody hates Monday through Friday. Well, unless you got a little bit of sunshine in the morning. Now, maybe you can tell from the title. But after our adventures with Jerry, I wanted to delve back into the into the world of cuckery. Because uh, it's so fucking infuriating. It's really hard not to want to watch it in a rage. I don't really know. It's cathartic, maybe? I'm not sure how to explain it. Maybe it's watching these people in this kind of situation makes me feel better about my life because I'm not them. Because I'll never be Jerry. 
I'll never have to watch my wife get fucked on the kitchen table by some other dude as I hold his wife's hand and we both sob to one another because we can't sexually satisfy our partners and our children are very confused at what's going on. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone in that feeling. In that feeling of just thank God that's not me. But I, I think it's it's good to dig into it. Nothing makes you feel better than knowing you're not them. It's always it's a good mindset to have in life. But we're going to need to switch that background picture to something more appropriate. I could go with Bunty King because he is, he is Mr. Cuck himself. I mean, the dude likes to, the dude likes to drink pee and eat shit. <laughs> you know, he got cucked. But um, I, I think this is more appropriate. I think this captures the mood a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit nicer for what we're going to be delving into. That kind of uh, captures the community. I've got a few videos lined up. Now, if you know a good cuck life video that's up on YouTube, just link it in the chat. We'll watch it. We'll watch it and feel better that we are not them. Maybe we'll swing by We'll swing by a cuck central Reddit. I'm sure that there's got to be an R cuck holding or something where we can point and laugh at them and the way their life's fallen apart and feel good about the fact that, again, that is not us. We do not have to deal with that. So let me get everything set up here. Put chat up on the side, get the video ready to roll. And we will jump right into it. I think it's going to be good times ahead. A nice, solid morning. All right, let's get that set up over there. Oh, where are we here? Move this shit out of the way. Just momentarily here, chat, getting everything ready to go get it all nice and lined up you know surprisingly who saw this coming buzzfeed and vice do a lot of cuck videos i mean i know it's it's shocking who would have figured those two reputable outlets would be responsible for the proliferation of massive amounts of cuckoldry on the internet but apparently that's what they're into lots of videos talking about how open relationships are good well we've got two to start with you tell me chat what sounds better to you Couple tries an open relationship for a month where we get to watch a man die slowly on the inside as his fat ass girlfriend rides the dick carousel. Or inside look, San Francisco's cuck clubs. As if, you know, that's kind of like, um, it's not it's not an oxymoron, it's redundant. I think putting San Francisco and cuckery in the title is redundant. We You could just use one or the other. But those are your choices. Man slowly dying inside. Or San Francisco, capital of Cuck uh, You tell me which one you're looking for. It all sounds awful? Well, it's supposed to sound awful. These are lifestyle choices people have made that are the wrong lifestyle choices. Wow, somebody is just, just unloaded. I don't even know what I'm looking at. There's actually an R cuckold? I was just kind of fucking around. I didn't really, okay. Of course, why wouldn't there be? You must be you must be eighteen you must be eighteen to view this community. <sighs> Sign me up. Oh my god. Oh it's it's porn. I can't show porn on streaming, I'm sorry. <laughs> of course it's porn. Of course it's dudes watching videos of their wives getting bold. I was expecting more stories of them crying because their life has fucking exploded. Or imploded in this case. I can't. I can't go to our cuckold. It, it it literally is nothing but videos of dudes' wives getting fucked by other guys. That's the whole subreddit. Can't can't show it. Can't show it. Can't uh, put it up on screen. <laughs> Not on streamy at least. Maybe maybe the streamy guys one day will be like, fuck it. Show all the cuckold shit you want, Jim. We don't care. All right, well, I'll just, I'll pick the show for the morning. Let's, let's go with couple tries and open relationship for a month. Well, I don't. And this one is up by, I don't even know what, I don't even know what this is, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Put it in theater mode, get the resolution set, and we'll jump right in. Oh, uh, okay, here we go. Welcome to the reality of cuckery. Let me just make sure I got everything lined up. Up, chat's up and good. We are good to go. Again, if you got links, put them in the side. Uh, 
the side chat, and I'll uh, I'll scroll through when I get a chance here. All right. There you are, chat. Say hello to yourself. Spam the shit out of it. Let's fucking grind the site to a halt. Take all the fucking uh, gifts you can and just shove it right up the ass of the chat. Let's make sure Kurt Eichenwald can never watch one of these streams without his wife having to jump onto the computer to save his life. And of course, what better way to start off a fucking video called Couple Tries and Open a Relationship for a Month with a dude that literally looks like a soy boy. Of course. Fitting. Fitting, really. There you go. This is a no-Kurt zone. You stay away, Kurt. You get away. You see all this flashing shit? This means you don't come here. Are right, you go be crazy somewhere else, Kurt. You're not welcome. Oh, assault gifts. Oh, my God. There's so many assault gifts in the chat, Kurt. Run for the hills. Oh, oh God. Poor Kurt's going to have a big hospital bill after this one. All right. Let's jump. 1.9 million people watched it. 19,000 of them were so confused they hit up. They they liked the video. Maybe that's... Maybe that 19,000 is just all centralized in California. We'll find out. Well, I don't think I'm having sex tonight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to, I think I would turn it down. You think um, you would? Are we going to like three? Yes, I would, I would. Of course. What better way to start off a, vid a video talking about cuckoldry than with BuzzFeed Presents? Let's just go for it. Eat the whole dick of life. Oh, right. The whole dick of life. Right. Eat it. Leanne and JD are opening their relationship after one and a half years together. They are both attracted they're both attracted to both men and women. Shocking. Shocking. Leanne and JD want a little bit of both. Let's see what uh, these winners look like. Deep throat it. Oh, this isn't good. I'm just gonna say for JD here. If your girlfriend at the very beginning of this conversation is already talking about deep throating cocks. <laughs> You're going to have to cover yourself in saran wrap because that bitch is going to be crawling with STDs. She's going to have fully grown sea crabs popping out between her legs. You're going to have sailors coming in off the street thinking they found a harvest. We met at an audition. And then we were in a. Oh, there we go. The beautiful Leanne. All 300 pounds of her. I, my boyfriend can't sexually satisfy me, so I need a big fucking bull. And look at his little red face. Cruise ship for like five months. So basically, like, we started a relationship on a really long honeymoon. I think it's really rare when you're... Oh, the power dynamics of this relationship. Look at this shit. Look at the contempt. Look at the contempt. She's just dead staring him. I'm gonna fuck so many guys. JD, are you looking at me? Look at me, JD. My vagina is going to be a party favor for every man on the block. You're going to hear it through the walls, JD. You're going to hear them fucking me through the walls. Trying to focus on making people laugh a lot for your career that uh, someone else really makes you genuinely laugh very often. I don't say that's my big one, too. <laughs> Look at these motherfuckers! Look at him! He looks like a deer in a headlight. Oh, I bet he's thinking right now, this is a mistake. What have I done? What in the fuck have I done? I'm letting my fat girlfriend fuck other men. Oh, this is... Look at him. All three pounds of him. The man is built like a stick. He's built like a stick with a permanent sunburn on his face. This is not a man that slays pussy. All right, whatever tenuous grasp you have on sexual satisfaction, all right, it's going to go out the window. All right, you're, you're probably awful in bed. And the moment she's on another dick, she's going to realize it. And your stupid ass, your dumb soy boy ridden ass, has agreed to let her go fuck all the dudes she wants to fuck. What were you thinking? You make me laugh a lot. I realize that I don't want to put all my emotional baggage, whatever, onto you. If I spark with someone, I want to be... Oh... Oh, why are you opening the relationship? Do you notice who was the first one to answer that? It wasn't Soy Boy. It was Heifer. Heifer jumped right on that. Hey, guys, why are you doing an open relationship? I want dick! Right out of the gates. Right out of the gates. She couldn't even help herself. I want an open relationship because I don't want to unload my... Yeah, I'm sure it's the emotional baggage 
that she wants to unload. I think she wants something unloaded on her, and it's not emotional baggage. It's a 12-inch throbbing black cock. That's what she wants unloaded on her. Oh, if I click, if we spark together. Be able to pursue that without feeling guilty, trusting you to like go out and be intimate with somebody else. And still oh, this woman knows. She knows and he knows. I trust you if you want to go fuck other girls. She's thinking in her head right now, he's never going to fuck anybody else. And he's thinking in his head right now, she's going to fuck everyone. I don't want to come back. Feels like a, a deeper level of intimacy. Use protection. You've kind of said, like, don't fall in love, but I'm not sure if that's a ground rule. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Dude, come on. She's laughing in your face. She's laughing in your face. You're bringing up love. When she's talking about opening the relationship, she's laughing at you because it's not love she wants slammed into her pussy. It's something else. It's something else that she wants deep inside her. I can't stop that. I think we need to tell each other every time we go on a date. It shouldn't conflict with our own dating. Oh, yeah. We have a date. Holy shit, I hate her. I hate this woman. He's trying to be all intellectual about it. We need to have some ground rules. Please don't fall in love with the bull. Please, please don't leave me. I love you. Use protection. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, honey. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I'll let you felch the cum out my ass when I'm done, okay? One day night. Like, what if you find someone you want to date for a while? I don't know. I don't know either. I feel like, I just, I feel like that's just something <laughs> we have to talk about. I don't want you to be unhappy. I hope you don't find someone you like better. But I also hope that my emotional needs, you know, don't get in the way of you being able to fully live and realize yours. Because, you know, we're thinking about marriage, even. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking about marriage, are you? I, I don't think you're going to be thinking about it too long. That is the face of a man who's died inside. This man's soul has left his body. It is ascended into another plane of soy. He's, he's jacked out right now. You can see his soul tearing in two. Look into his eyes. The portents of his soul. Look deeply into his eyes. You can see his heart has been shattered. And look at her. Fat, jovial, smiling. Oh, she's already counting all the dicks she's going to be sucking. And forever is a long time. Do you think this is going to improve our relationship or tear us apart? No, improve, <laughs> I hope. Like, it's going to totally improve our relationship. I'm going to be so much happier with you paying my bills as I fuck other dudes. Right, so I've been talking to somebody on OkCupid. Okay I just don't know what to do now. It reminds me of middle school, like, where it's like you're just talking to strangers on AOL Instant Messenger. JD is a little bit more excited to go on dates. Yes, I gotta get out there. He's got a date for this weekend already, and I did feel a, like kind of a stab of jealousy. Leanne and I are starting an open relationship. What do you think about that? Uh, whatever makes you guys happy. I got. That's Jorge's way of saying, way to fuck yourself in the ass, dude. Best of luck, bro. <laughs> Jorge's like, I don't want any part of this. You two stay the fuck away from me. Like, at least three people I'm talking to, and I've already, like, got a date for Sunday night. I almost feel guilty going on a date with somebody who's not Leanne. And it's kind of exciting. I'm just like worried that Leanne's doing this to overcome her own insecurities or anxieties. I want this to be something that's fun that we're doing kind of together. My first date. <laughs> Are you excited? You don't seem excited. Is trepidation the right word? We haven't like talked about having sex with other people. Oh, now the bitch is worried. Oh, she was giggling like a schoolgirl when she was thinking of all the dicks she was going to be sucking. But now that Soy Boy might be slamming something, I don't even know if it's a dude or a chick, but now that he's got some meat on the menu, Suddenly, she's worried about protection. She rolled her eyes when he said, Hey, do you mind wrapping the bull's cock up in something so I don't get AIDS? But now now that he might be fucking something, suddenly she's worried. Oh, fat girl's now reconsidering her options. I think I would turn it down. I think um, you would? Are we going to like three? Yes, I would. I would. I hey, you don't yell at the camera. I don't think either of us got into this because we're sexually unsatisfied. At least I'm not. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, I don't think either of us are sexually unsatisfied. I'm not, but look at his reaction. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, Fanny. Oh, it's not working out like you were expecting it to, is it, honey? Oh, you thought you could get all the dick you wanted and there were no repercussions. Oh, ho, ho, ho. soy boy is fucking a Chad and you're going out on the curb with the trash. Oh, <laughs> I'm just shrugged. Well, I, mean, I, 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 I mean, like, whatever, sex it, is... It wasn't just to have sex, is what I right. was Absolutely. saying. Janie has a date tonight. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm supposed to be getting dates for myself, and instead, I've been inviting my friends to hang out more. <laughs> what if you get slayed tonight? How's that make you feel? Yeah, come on, Piggy, tell us how that makes you feel. Oink once for heartbreak, oink three times for divorce. How do you feel? How does it feel to have your plan blow up in your face, you stupid bitch? Oh, well, let's have an open relationship, JD. I want to suck all the dick in the world, JD. Well, now JD's out getting a hand job. JD, <laughs> somebody in chat said he's the alpha cuck. Oh, and your ass is sitting there crying. Did he just came back from his date? My first date was very neutral. There wasn't like a spark or whatever or a connection that I felt. I realized that that's, I think what I was hoping would happen. It's See, she's not kissing him out of affection. She's checking his breath for the smell of cum. She knows what's up. She knows that he went on to, it was an okay cute, but it was Tinder. He went on to Tinder. He got the black bull. Something, something has gone wrong here. She wanted Jamal, but instead JD has been fucking Tyrone. And now he's come back smelling like cum and she's very upset. It's a reality that, you know, attraction occurs and, and people have been pretending like it doesn't for a long time. Sex isn't that huge of a part of a relationship. Uh, <laughs> listen to this shit. Oh, I love that. Oh, she's nervous now. You can tell... Now things have shifted. The dynamic has quickly shifted. She thought she was hot shit at the start of this. All right, and he's a little soy boy cuck bitch. Now he's getting some, I don't know, pussy or ass on the side. Now all of a sudden she's a little bit worried. Sex isn't that important, she says, after he said, I'm not satisfied with you. Now it's not important. Oh, oh reap what you sow, honey. I think a lot of people would disagree with you. It is important. Dude, this guy, uh, I love it. He knows he's getting revenge on her. Oh, look, sex isn't that important. Watch his reaction. A relationship. I think a lot of people would disagree with you. It is. In fact, one of those people sitting on the couch next to you, pig, I disagree with you. Fucking you, fucking you is like riding a waterbed made out of fat, disgusting flesh. The oils you secrete make me want to vomit. Have you seen me? I weigh 90 pounds. When you get on top of me and ride me, it's like being smothered by a fat man. <laughs> Important, but it's, it's just a small part of life. You're speaking now how you want to be. Yeah, that's how you manifest that shit. Got a date on Friday with a guy from OK Cupid. I'm feeling good about this one. Leanne's finally getting her. To He's got two dates. This guy is fucking. This guy is riding the dick. Care. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Oh, she sla She slaughtered his soul. All right, when this started. This bitch murdered him, all right? She fucking shattered his heart. And now he's taking revenge in a very interesting way. Instead of her getting all the dick, he's taking it all. It was wet, I guess, and uh, I don't know, she seems pretty excited about it, so that makes me happy. Yeah, has a date next week on Wednesday. Tell me about your date. Uh, she has good grammar. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Tell me about your date, fatty. Is his name Ben and Jerry's? <laughs> is Ben and Jerry coming to be your date, Tubby? Is that who you're going to be hanging out with on Friday? Me? Oh, I'm going out to the bar with Jamal Tyrone. Uh, we're going to you know, like have a gay gangbang up there. We've done it the last week. I mean, sex isn't important. You told me that, right? So I'm going to go have a lot of sex. I'm going to get bowled up. All right, my ass is going to bleed. I'm going to walk home on crutches. You have a good time with your ice cream. I have a date tonight. I know. I'm pretty excited. Are you? You're hiding in pillows right now. The first one I kind of was like, just jumping into it because I was like, oh, I gotta go on a date with somebody. This one I feel a little bit more excited about. These are the good blue jeans, right? No, those are those weird blue jeans you have where the crotch is all rubbed out. Like, I hope it doesn't like go really well where it's like we like want to hang out for a long time and then it's like, oh man, I have to wake up in four hours. So you're hoping your date doesn't go well? 
No, wait. How do you feel about this? And I keep waiting for bad feelings to start bubbling up and for me to start to get worried, to get jealous, to get insecure. And I just don't feel that way. Uh, I just dropped JD off on his date. That jealousy that I was talking about not feeling, it hit me. Just this feeling of like, you're not supposed to have romantic fun without me. Oh, I love this. I love this. She wants the open relationship. She's the one that's all gung-ho in the beginning. He's out fucking other dudes. And she's in her car crying about it. Oh, I thought you wanted to find somebody to spark with. I want you. I thought you wanted to unload that emotional baggage. What's the matter? Is it possible to be open and happy? Like we were just talking nonstop and like really getting along. And we ended up like kissing at the end of the night. I don't see you, man. But that's cool. Yeah. I was envious, jealous. Yeah. It's smart. It was fun to talk with him. I feel like we just connected on a lot of things. Such like, as? Life philosophies. What's your life philosophy? Going on a date tonight? No matter what happens, this will be an adventure in IJD had. Finally went on one, like kind of, because I was like, well. Look at him. Off smiling in the distance. He's got his hair styled now. He took the glasses off. <laughs> He's considering his options. He's looking towards the future, which is not in her direction, by the way. His future, off in that direction. Hers, on the pig farm. He's, I gotta go. And we didn't have like a, a sexual spark, at least for me, but she was so smart and so kind. Talked for five hours. I connected with her and I wanna talk to her more. She doesn't actually live here, so I didn't wanna get sexual with her. I just don't know that I'm interested in dating someone else. I, I, I do like the idea, you know, if I could, if I spark with someone, that'd be great, but I don't wanna put on my, my plate trying to find people to spark with. Are you hoping I'd have a sexier time? I don't know, like, I guess I was worried you'd like come home and just be like, never again. She went on that first date. I felt that was kind of like really the major sense of relief for me where I was just like, okay, it's not just me going on dates. It's not something she's doing for me. Like this is something that we can both explore. I I feel like this dude is, he's, he's, he's straight into the mind games. Like there's some subtext to what he's saying there. He's like, oh, when she went on her first date, I was worried that it wouldn't be for her because he knows that she was in the car breaking down emotionally over it. He's those These are subtle jabs that he's just digging into her. <laughs> he's never going to let her live this down. Every time they have a fight from this day forward, he's going to say, hey, you remember when we had that open relationship for a month and I fucked like 80 people and you sat on the couch crying? Do you want to do that again? And she'll shut right the fuck up. I had a good time. Like, I don't really want to go pursue others. I feel like you wish that I was kind of more into being promiscuous with others because you want to be. I have, like, this fear that... Oh, she's... I love it, too. When women do stupid shit, they like to try to turn it around on you and make it like it's your fault. You see, she wanted the open relationship, but now she's saying, oh, I was... You really liked it. No, honey, you're the one that wanted it. You initiated it. You were the one that was all happy in the beginning. He just, you shattered the man, and he went along with it, and it worked out for him. But now, now you regret it. Like, you're just doing all this for me, and I don't like that idea. Why is that a bad idea? Why can't I do something for you? But are you saying it's true? Just, no. Okay. When I say something like, hey, I'm feeling insecure about that, JD's just hears me, holds me a little closer, and pays a little more attention. It feels like we've actually been- He just holds me a- Look at his face when she says this. I need to back this up. It feels like we've actually been just more- a little more attention. It <laughs> this is amazing! She's talking- Whenever I feel sad, JG, JD just holds me and pays me attention. He's looking at the floor. He doesn't even- His head is turned towards her, but he doesn't even want to look at her. He's thinking, he's thinking in his head, I hate you. I hate you so much, fat woman. I hate you so fucking much. And now I've seen that I can get other people. I don't want you anymore. <laughs> You're horrible. Go away. It pays a little more attention. It feels like we've actually been just more affectionate. I love you. I love you. <laughs> he wouldn't even make contact with her <laughs> do you see that he's like yeah it's like that's how you kiss a dog that's how you kiss a pet <laughs> he won't even touch her now 
I'm looking for evidence that this is the wrong way to go. It doesn't feel wrong. I feel like I'm falling more in love with JD, you know? We're just having easier days. When we are together, it's better. We keep communicating and like really just sharing and it somehow has made us even closer. My first, second date in an open relationship. We've been texting all week. I told JD that he's allowed to do whatever he wants with his date. I don't expect things to get uh, hot and heavy. JD, if I was gonna be gone, he's like, I'm gonna bring a date over to our place. Oh, she, now she's getting, now Fatty's getting upset. It's, not only is JD out there, not only is he out there as a dick magnet, he wants to bring them home now. JD is going to bring dudes home and fuck them on their bed. He wants the scent of it there. He wants this bitch to know completely what's going on. Like, I don't want there to be any miscommunication here. I brought a dude home, and you can smell, I had him drag his balls across your duffet, all right, all over your pillows. Oh, you know those stupid little throw pillows you made us buy? Dragged his nuts right across them. Put your face in there when you cry. Bury your face into his nut pillows when you cry. Watch TV, which everybody knows is code for, you know, touch each other's hearts. Man, I don't want him doing it in my bed. So I told JD, I was like, I didn't love it if we could just make our place off limits. And he was like, okay. Uh, second day yesterday, we went and got some like pizza and then had some coffee. I don't know what is it. I'm I'm trying to get out of it necessarily. Where is this gonna lead? Like, cause like I went on two dates now and it's like, you're probably going on a third date. And it's just like, well, where's it gonna go to? You know what you want? No idea. Doesn't seem like either of us are that super enthusiastic about it. But I still like the idea of like being open about it and like, and, and welcoming like a positive experience. The idea that we're just open to love as it comes. That's great. I think that's great. Oh, she is regretting this. <laughs> they won't even look. I've noticed after the beginning of this episode, if you go back and watch this, their eye contact has diminished greatly. Like, it started out with them sitting across and looking at each other directly in the eyes. And now all this dude does is talk about all the people he's fucking. And she is just, she's freaking the fuck out internally. We kind of realized that we're doing this kind of thing as an adventure together. That fear of falling for someone else isn't really there anymore. I'm about to go on date number three with this guy. It's kind of the point where it's like date three. I'm like, well, what does short-term dating mean? What are his expectations? Just talked and enjoyed each other's company. I don't know what's going to happen. You got any dates since your last one? Going out to a wedding by myself tomorrow. Oh, is that right, Piggy? Are you going out by yourself to other people getting married? Oh, I'm going to be fucking dudes. You have fun by yourself alone with no other person. Me, I'm going to be sucking dick. That's what JD's doing tonight. You can go cry at the wedding of people who are happy and getting married. We're never getting married, by the way. I just want you to know that. Yeah, you going to pick someone up? I go by myself, and I am kind of have my eye open. And I was dancing, and it's thought, well, is it going to happen? And no. He knows, like, I could do this. I just don't need to. I don't know. We're coming to the end of this month-long journey. It's not really not that exciting anymore. I feel like my partner is more attentive and more loving and more interested in me, sexually and otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's nice delusions you have, honey. Is that what you think? I couldn't tell. He was so busy dating other people, I couldn't tell how attentive he was to you. <laughs> Women are so deluded. Oh, did this backfire hard on her. <laughs> Experiment of success, I guess. I've been getting out more, meeting new people. This is exactly the opposite of what I feel like I was taught is safe. I think we're both pretty content with how things turned out and how things are going. I definitely don't feel like I'm seeking too much out anymore. After the first couple weeks and like going, each of us went on a date. I went on a few dates and it kind of just lost. <laughs> it kind of I love it. He and I love it. This dude, he wanted to rub that in a little. Just watch watch this. Watch her <laughs> watch him say this. He's comparing numbers, but he's making sure that she knows he got more. And then watch her reaction when he says it. I went on a few dates and it kind of just lost. <laughs> oh, she knows. Yeah, that's right. You giggle, bitch. I want you to remember who runs this relationship. When I get home, dinner better be ready. And I want that fucking apartment cleaned up. 
Or else I'm bringing my boyfriends back over to rub their balls on your shit again. It kind of just lost its like... Uh, I feel like we lost, like it was frenzy and trepidation. I feel like we've both kind of come to this comfortable position of, yeah, it's great, we're, we'll stay in an open relationship, but uh, we're not gonna like actively seek out dates. I just keep falling more in love with you. I think jealousy comes from low self-esteem. And I feel like I have higher self-esteem now. You just have to communicate and respect your partner and be good to other people. I you hear me, bitch? Are you listening? You better start respecting me more. <laughs> that's exactly, that's what, that is what the intended message was. Oh, the power dynamic shifted 100%. This is an absolute role reversal from the beginning. Oh, she was so happy to get into this, smiling and shit. And now, now he's sitting there basically saying, you'd better be real attentive. You'd better be on your A game from now on. Because looking at you, you're not that great looking. You're kind of pudgy. And I don't like your attitude very much. And I think we all are familiar with the fact that I fucked a lot of dudes. So you, you better step it up if you want to stay in the home. I just trusted you to be there on this adventure with me. So even though it was scary, I was like, we'll come out the other side. Okay. And we did. We came out. Oh, holy shit. He didn't even fucking respond. Did you? <laughs> did you? Wow. Oh, this bitch is getting fucking massacred. I just trusted you to be there on this adventure with me. So even though it was scary, I was like, we'll come out the other side. He fucking he, he laughed at her. We'll come out the other side. <laughs> he fucking laughed at her. So even though it was scary, I was like, we'll come out the other side. Did you see that? He's biting back a smile. He's like, you're so deluded, fatty. Okay. And we did. We came out stronger. Holy shit. Oh, that dude. That's that's impressive. He completely fucking reversed that. <laughs> she got fucked so hard. Oh, that is brutal as fuck. Oh, you want an open relationship, honey? Is that is that what you really want? You want the open relationship? Is that what you're telling me, sweetheart? Is that is that what you're looking for? You want to fuck other guys? Okay. Oh, we'll do an open relationship. Let's see how that turns out. Oh, what's that? I'm fucking tons of people and you're not? Oh, you don't want to do an open relationship anymore? Really? You were so happy to do it before. What happened, honey? What <laughs> what went wrong, baby? Oh, tell me, sweetheart. You not you're not satisfied anymore? Oh, you don't want to do the open relationship. Okay. Got a few super berries here. Uh, from Sweet Squad, ID number 1488. Cuck life, thug life. We need more Mandar Daddy Jim. May the darkness grow. From Tiger. Cucks need to be thrown into gas chambers so we can make the West great again. Medicarist. Oink, oink, oink. So they both went on gay dates. How is Metro Jim? Also try out Apex. Uh, it's super fun. From Skylar951, Morning Jim. From Darolak, this vid reminded me of another story. And it's a Discord link. I don't use Discord. Put it up on Imager. I'm not touching Discord. From Garrick, my emotional needs. How long can I keep these holes blown up before you stop financially <laughs> supporting me? Fucking a coffee. IGN had a dating show for a few years ago. Just look at the title. Geek Love, episode number eight. See Hitler trolling for love. Uh, well, we have to watch that. An IGN dating show sounds like a fucking disaster. We'll watch that. Uh, where are we here? Uh, from Gopnik. You fucker Jim, I have 12 hours of work, 5 hours in which to sleep, and you spring on, uh, this on me now. This had better be worth it, you rough. Kenny Jones 91 what's your personal opinion on the YouTuber Rags, the dog? I believe you did a live stream with him. I, I think he's a skeptic. I, I don't know. I don't want your shit. And if we did a live stream together, it would have had to have been years ago? Was it was he on one of Andy's streams when the trout shit was going on? Because that's probably the only time I would have ever encountered him. From Blanco Spooky, Gunt 2020. Jim, you need to address this sooner or later. And again, Gunt 2020. I've already talked about Gunt. Twice now, people have super chatted about it. 1488 forever. Nigerian scammers today, boss. Not today, no. Guns down, inhale. Hey, Jim. Have you met the Russian government in Metro yet? If not, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, yes, I have met. We've gone to the military base. I don't want to spoil the game, uh, its settings, or its story. But um, we've gone to the Mountain Military Base. Yes, I have. Uh, Ryan M73048, thanks for the lessons. All right. 
We are caught up. Now, where was this fucking IGN dating show? Oh, this sounds like it's going to be awful, which is great. Exactly what you want. You want awful fucking content. All right, let's see. All right, this is from, I, I guess IGN did this back in 2013. I've never watched this, so I don't know what the fuck we're in store for here. But let's take a look at IGN's dating show, because I'm sure it's going to be good. I am a sea Hitler troll. I'm so <laughs> We're already off to a good start. Oh, look at that face. Oh, oh, I am, I am a C. Hitler troll. Well, you got the troll part right. I can believe, looking like that, you live under a bridge. I can picture you sleeping under underpasses. That doesn't, um, <laughs> that, that doesn't strike me as an extraordinary claim by yourself. If you excuse me now, I'm going to go sit in the chair over there, facing away from somebody that's not insane. I am a C. Hitler troll. I'm surprised that somebody would do something so relatively new and obscure. Um, it's from Homestuck. It's a webcomic. I'm a little nervous of people not liking me. I don't understand the horns. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, is it going to be this chick trying to get dick the entire convention? Is that what this whole episode is? Because if so, fantastic. They look like candy corn. already off to an amazing start now i don't go to these conventions so i i don't know if the cosplayed uh speed dating thing is a regular occurrence maybe it is chat you're gonna have to fill me in on that but um i i i don't imagine fat girls that smell bad are really well sought after and so the idea of having to speed date between 80 heifers at a comic-con convention seems like a fucking nightmare I have two favorite things about Comic-Con. First off, I love the costumes. And the fact that I can dress like this and I can still have a guy that's crazy about me. Dating normal people when you're an ultra fan sucks. If you're a fangirl and you want to date a guy that's not into that stuff, it's not going to work. Oh, Are you over 18? Yes. Single? Yeah. Imagine, imagine walking around a convention with your child and a fat Jedi walks up to your fucking little daughter and grabs her on the shoulder and says, You over 18? Hey, hey, little girl, you over 18? You want to speed date a Jedi? Are you over 18? Can your daddy sign a permission slip? Do you want to come with a Jedi to see my magical lightsaber in the closet? Yeah, I'll pick him up. Guys. Guys. Whoa! Somebody's looking <laughs> fabulous. Over 18? Yes. Single? Yes. Horny? <laughs> this dude doesn't fuck around. Hey, you over 18? Oh, yeah, you are? Do you want to get fucked? Do you want 19 dicks? shoved inside of you are you horny lady you're over 18 right let's fuck right here yes. Impressive. my name is kayla i'm 24 and i am a cosplay holic i have two closets one is for cosplay unless they have over 20 costumes i date not very much my dating life is kind of dead right now this is going to be for New York Comic Con, but it's not finished yet. It's gonna be the contents from Homestuck. My past relation. Oh, uh, in case anybody in the audience wasn't sure, Homestuck is an interactive webcomic. And this woman apparently has styled her life after it. Wow, you say you're single. Who saw that coming? Maybe, maybe don't walk around looking like a satanic clown with uh, 30 foot horns on your head. And maybe somebody would pity fuck you. Relationships have been shit. I've had a guy I dated for two and a half years, and I had to hide the fact that I liked anime and cosplay, so I would always throw them in my closets when he would come around. And one day, he actually went through my closet and found my costumes, and right there on the spot broke up with me and left my house. <laughs> Somebody in chat called her Hamstuck. <laughs> That's perfect. That should be your fucking nickname at conventions, Hamstuck. It's like two seconds later, so... Yeah. Albert, what are you doing? I am a... 
Where's my medicine? Why are you dressed like that? Are you the devil? Home health aid, and I live with the older couple I take care of. Holy fucking shit. Could you imagine your grandfather is dying of, like, fucking stage 4 cancer? And you come into his house to find out how the chemotherapy is going? And some obese woman dressed up like a satanic clown greets you? <laughs> he must... He, he's the poor guy's already dealing with dementia. You don't need to make it worse. Or he's probably hallucinating on his own. He's not going to know what's real or not. His doctors are going to over-medicate him because he keeps telling him about the fat clown in his house. Claire and Albert. They've been married 58 years, and they're amazing. What do I do on the first date? I've never been on a real date. No fooling around on the first date. Is that necking? Yeah. <laughs> I think I have trouble finding someone to date because I have low self-esteem. I can't stand it. I feel so alone. So do I call first or do they call first? Oh, no. He has to call you first. So I have to wait? You don't call him. Why? I love the look of sheer disgust on this woman's face. Why is the home health aide? Why is the nurse asking me for dating advice? My husband's bedpan needs to be cleaned. Alfred has shit himself. You need to go clean his diaper. Why are you asking me about how to get dick? Go attend to my dying husband. You just don't. Because you know I go to the conventions and I dress up. When people first meet me, I think they might be turned off by the character I'm portraying, Condens of Homestuck. So I'll be wearing those big troll horns that are like three feet tall and the fangs and the yellow eyes. I don't think I'd ask you for a date. Holy shit, even the 90-year-old woman wouldn't pity fuck you. <laughs> even the old woman, sweet old grandma who's supposed to lie to you and say you're beautiful, is telling you to your face that she wouldn't even hit on you with a duck or a dump truck. This bitch wouldn't roll over you. <laughs> Dude! Oh, that's harsh. That is brutal as fuck. Oh. <laughs> I really hope to have something that Albert and Claire have of 58 years being married, but it all depends on if I find somebody or not. The advice I would give geeks looking for love is to be outrageous. Go up to someone and like roar it though. I love geeks. All right, ladies. I want you to walk in and stand next to the table at the end of the room. I am feeling a little bit anxious and happy and, wow, I just hope I meet somebody. <laughs> Nervous. Thank you all for doing this. Without you, I'd have to pay to be at this convention. <laughs> so ladies, I'm going to ask you to please take a seat facing me. Ladies, if you'd please go sit at your assigned troughs, the men will bring by the slop buckets and we'll begin the dating ritual. OK. Gentlemen. Please have a seat in front of any lady you choose. It doesn't matter. You'll have to talk to all of them. I got to ask, who are you supposed to be? The condens from Homestuck. What? The condens from Homestuck. Uh, condens? Um, it's from Homestuck. It's a webcomic. She's like a sea Hitler. She kills like low blood trolls that are beneath her, like bigger the horns. OK. Yeah. OK, OK, anime Hitler uh, that lives under the sea. Uh, I'm going to go over there now. I don't like him. He scares me a little bit. I want someone that would know my character, maybe. That would be really cool. So what exactly are you? I am a sea Hitler troll. Kayla looks great in her costume, but I'm surprised that somebody would do something so relatively new and obscure for speed dating. All right, so I have to ask, where's your cosplay from? I'm from Homestuck. It's a webcomic. It looks fantastic. Thank you. I'm really into Batman comics. Batman? Yeah. Yep, Batman's my favorite. He's cool. He had, like, some things in common with Batman thing, but... She thinks she's in love because this dude didn't vomit. This dude was able to look at her for 10 seconds without puking, so now she's found future husband material. Oh, Batman comics? Yeah, I love Batman comics. I love whatever you love. Please date me. Please pity fuck me. I will do anything. Please pity fuck me. It's just, no one knows who I am, and it's, like, getting annoying. Why? Okay. Homestuck. Yes. Homestuck. Homestuck. Brony. You're Brony? Mm -hmm. oh. We're colliding forces on the internet. Yeah, I don't really, I don't understand the whole... And I don't quite understand the whole stuff. 
Tom Pony. I got a little tattoo on my butt. I don't know if you understand this, but I like little horses, and there's nothing little about you. You're the opposite of little, okay? <laughs> you you are filed under the heading large. I like little things, and you are the size of a small moon. This is my first time speed dating. I'm a little nervous of people not liking me. I just want someone that can actually like sit down and just talk. Yeah. What were your number again? I'm six. So basically, anybody actually I like, I'm just going to write down. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. You know, anybody I don't like, obviously, I'm not going to write down. Oh, I actually, you there know, you go. Good start. Oh, okay. So. Hi. Are you having fun? Yes. Have you seen anybody you like yet? Yes. The one with the blonde wig and he's got the red and white shirt. He's from the same series I'm from. Yeah, the guy that is literally staying on the other side of the room. So that one that's also into Homestuck is avoiding you. They, they, they scanned the room, and they saw you. And they were like, I'm going to sit over here. I'm going to pretend I don't notice the woman with 18-foot horns on her head. Where's that brony? Where did that brony go? I think I'm in love with the brony. Anything to get away from you, see Hitler. Oh, my God. I know, right? I know, but he didn't sit in front of me first. All right, you'll get, you'll get the date, everybody. I promise. I really want, like, a girly guy, and I don't know, he's super cute. All right, take it off. Hi. Hi. So, obviously... That's not a dude, is it? That's a chick, right? You like Homestuck? You, you like, like Homestuck? I'm so excited. I love your costume. I'm so sad when you didn't sit in front of me. I was like, oh, the Homestuck doesn't I tried to, but... Didn't you really? Yeah, somebody else got... I saw somebody going that way, so I was like, oh. Oh, I was so sad. I'm so excited now. Oh, so Dave's your favorite character, or? I really love Dad. He knew, like, everything, and that was definitely wonderful, being able to express your fandom just so easily, and... She keeps calling him he and him. Is she so deluded? That's a chick. All right, that's a trap. <laughs> There's some trickery going on. She's getting rused. And she's falling for it. She's so thirsty for dick. She's convinced herself that this little lesbian has a penis. Photo shoot? I'll see what I can do. I might be too shy. Oh, you should definitely go. Oh my god, you should definitely go. Oh, okay. It was nice meeting you. Alright, bye. Well, we're both kind of into the same thing, so it was very exciting. She was also seemed really nice. You've all been keeping track of who you liked on your scorecards, right? No. Okay, whoever said no, leave. Who's really nervous? Raise your hand and be honest with me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh my God, this is gonna be great. Does he actually make them stand up and list off who they liked and didn't like? Are we gonna get to watch this fat Homestuck cosplayer cry as everybody in the room says they didn't like her? Oh, that would be so fucking mean. I hope he does it. Nothing to be worried about. You're gonna find the papers with the numbers on it of the people you like. And on the papers of the people that you liked, you will write your first name and either your cell phone or your email address, okay? Run, two, three, go. I am going to hope that the people I wrote down like me back. Like, more so, like, the homestead person. I'm hoping they'll pick me. Ladies. Okay, okay, chat, before we see the final results. So she's got to get their numbers and their emails. How many people do you think responded to her? How <laughs> many? Wow. Okay, I bet this one is going to get more than this one. All right, you could be a fat slob. As long as you don't have 40-foot fucking horns on your head and have painted yourself to look like a clown, you're probably going to get a date. <laughs> this chick, Mama Sita here, is going to be fucking all the nerds. But you, lady that's wearing the 18-foot horns, I don't think, I don't think so. Chat's giving a lot of zeros and ones. Let's find out. This is called the perfect match game, okay? Grab your papers real quick, and then come back to the wall. Go fast. How do you find the name? Numbers. If you see somebody that you liked, who liked you back, that is a perfect match. My guys put his number. Yeah, mine too. Oh, oh, that is beautiful. That is, where are the, the first thing she says looking at her list, where are the numbers? There are none. No one wrote anything down. <laughs> and now she's throwing a fit. You'd better give me your number. You didn't write your number down. I know you like me. There's no number on mine. 
If you put his contact info down, you can call him later. Find the person that you're perfect match with. Get to them as fast as you can. Oh my God. Sit in front of them, yes. Oh, this is going to be so brutal. This is going to be so fucking brutal. Everybody is going to sit with somebody and her dumb ass with those giant pretzel sticks on her head is going to be crying at the wall. I thought I would get picked, but I didn't. It's, it's tough because you see people open up during the speed dating. I want all the losers. Okay, speed dating rounds over, everybody. All the good-looking people that are going to get some sex at this uh, weird convention. Uh, come on, sit down on a chair. All you fat, ugly, lonely people, stand up against the wall so we can look at you. All the fat, ugly, lonely people, please line up. Please line up on the wall so we can see what uh, <laughs> who's going to be crying tonight at the buffet. Could you please line up just in a, in a nice line? I want to take a picture of your despair. You see their comments levels rise, they're feeling it, and then nobody comes. If you did not find a perfect match, boogie on, I have more sessions. Please come back. I'd love to see you all again. For those of you that don't have a perfect match, okay? It means the game's over for you guys. I hope you had fun speed day. I hope you had fun. Come again. <laughs> what a dick! I hope you had fun. Come again. Maybe you can stand up against the wall of shame some more. Just to see the one person you kind of get your hopes for, they don't put that number down. It's kind of like a throwback, like, what did I do wrong? Head to the door, guys. If you have somebody in front of you. I know, it's a terrible feeling when you don't get picked by the person you liked. Thank you for playing Speed Day. And the people I wrote down, I did, but they didn't write me. So, you know, it's sad. I'll be single for a little while. Holy shit, how funny would it have been? <clears throat> If, if somebody wrote down the number for the suicide hotline, <laughs> her, her list is full of nothing but suicide helplines and 911 in every space. Because nobody wants to touch you. Go home. Go home and take care of dying grandpa. You're, you, that's your job. Clean his shit up. Nobody wants you. Do you want to meet me near? How much do you want to bet? And this is I'm gonna I'm gonna put a guess here. Two guesses. The cameras filmed her being shattered in front of an entire room full of people. Nobody wanted to touch her. Now she realized she's on film, and looks like the saddest, loneliest fuck that's ever existed on planet Earth. So she is lying right now. She is lying to the production company, telling them that that person. She's talking to herself. You you can hear the dial tone. Of her phone because nobody's on the other le uh, other end, or second guess, she the the other Homestuck cosplayer felt such a deep sense of pity for the fat girl crying against the wall of shame that she gave her a phone number to text in the hopes that this woman wouldn't throw herself in front of a bus before the convention was over and ruin everybody's time. That's that, those are my guesses on this. In the past, the cosplay has definitely scared off people that I would want to get to know. The best part about Comic-Con was you get to be yourself and you don't have to worry. I would totally do it again. Hey everybody, this is my update. Basically, Alan and I, the Dave cosplayer, we've been talking every day, uh, whether it's through Skype. Okay, first off, her name is Cynthia, not Dave. Secondly, she is a her, not a him. Third, you're not talking to them at all. Nobody believes this. You're not fooling any of us, Homestuck. We know that you got rejected by a room full of fat nerds. All right, you went to Nerd City, the fucking mecca of geekdom, and they wouldn't even touch you. Nobody's buying this. Text messaging, and even though there was a big misunderstanding at the session, Everything worked out great. So he's never been on a date really either. So that makes things even better. 
New York Comic Con in general was amazing. I'm really glad I went and I just wanted to give everybody my luck. All right, bye. Oh, holy shit, Chad. I think I do want more. This might be the most depressing dating show that's ever fucking existed. Should we watch more of this? There, This is episode 8. I can see episode 9 up ahead. I, I, IGN made a dating show that's the saddest thing on earth. Should we watch more of this? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm torn. We can watch more cuck shit, or we could watch perhaps the, the, the fucking holy grail of sadness. <laughs> this is so depressing. Yes, I'm seeing a lot of yes. Okay, chat. Let me, um, how am I going to do this? Let me get a drink. Let me get nice and comfortable. We're going to watch a lot of IGN dating. <laughs> because why not? Uh, let's see, where are we here? Put on a little background music. All right, uh, just for a minute. I'm going to go get a drink. Uh, use the bathroom if you need to. And then we're going to watch the saddest people on earth get rejected by the saddest people on earth to find out who really is at the bottom of the totem, or totem pole when it comes to geeks. So uh, take a minute uh, break. Be right back. We are back. Let me get some more episodes lined up here. Uh, let's see. What do we have? The next one is... <laughs> the next one is literally called Mama's Boy. Oh. Oh, my God. It's like the Dorito King just wanted to shit on his fucking audience for the fun of it. <laughs> and had this show made just to punish them. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, hold on. Oh, okay. Let me read. We got a few super berries here. Let me read them real quick, and then we'll jump right back into the fucking, into the fucking fray here. One second, chat. Oh, it's a pretty good show. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised this exists, to be honest with you. Uh, from Mr. Curie, how you doing, nigger nerd? I'm doing great. Caleb LL show. Take my two dollars, you whore, Jim. Thank you for streaming today. Totally didn't stay up all night waiting for photon. Now I have to work, and you're here, fantastic. Also, I made a you a nigger nerd, <laughs> a nigger nerd. Oh, very nice. Subby Dubby. Hey, Jim, remember that Al Salieri 2 guy you mentioned in the That Guy with the Glasses series? Well, apparently he thinks you caused the Tonka fight in real life drama and that you're an e-bagger. Video here. Don't care. Uh, from Darlock, swap the story uh, to Imager. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a bit. Shoot Gunner, solve Cuckoldry in 30 seconds, Jim. Uh, sounds good. Uh, Sweetie Squad D, number 1488, I think. Uh, okay, Cuck Life, Thug Life. We need more Mandar, Daddy Jim. May the darkness grow. All right, fantastic. Well, uh, let's get back into the IGN goodness. We've got the next episode up, which is literally titled Mama's Boy. So uh, here we go. Uh, let me get this light up. All right, we're good to go. Here we go, chat. Here we go. Uh, there we are. I'm Joey, and I'm a huge geek. Whoever he finds, he's got to be able to bring back home to Ma. 
As far as she's concerned, like, any woman in my life is a threat. What kind of girl are you going to find at Comic-Con? We are girls go there. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I just want to find a girl who isn't my mother. It doesn't matter if she's a virgin. You know, the one thing I can consistently say about speed dating is the odds are really good, but the goods are still really kind of odd. Geek Club is being with someone who doesn't think you're weird. There's power! Over 18? Yep. Single? Very. Spiders? As an attraction or as just something to admire or collect or... Whatever you do with your women is not my business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is his hair running away from his cosplay? <laughs> <laughs> Did his hairline get a look at the shirt and was like, fuck this, I'm out of here? Is that what's going on here? So this is my room, or what I like to refer to as my very geeky man cave. I'm Joey, I'm 25, this is my fourth time going to Comic-Con. Wow, uh, who thought the guy that uh, has a fucking picture of Steve Jobs, for whatever reason, just sitting on his shelf in the middle of his room, front and center. Who would have thought this guy's having trouble getting pussy? Steve Jobs just sitting right there. For some reason, women won't come up to his man cave. Really bizarre. My first time looking for love there. I have uh, right now the Xbox uh, 360, the PS3. I have a Wii. Um, I have a Wii. The three words that best describe me are probably uh, geeky, Ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody corrected me. That's a Steve Jobs book. Oh, pardon me. Pardon, pardon me for getting that wrong. I wouldn't want to misidentify this beautiful picture of Steve Jobs sitting on his shelf. No, honey, that's not just the portrait. It's a book as well. Would you like to browse on my iMac and see all the pictures of me alone at Comic-Con? <laughs> and lonely. One was to say that I have a relationship with video games, then... I definitely cheated on Super Mario with Sonic the Hedgehog. He's like the blue uh, seductress who takes me out into the night and does wonderful things to me. I love women. Everything about women, yeah. Women are great. They're so sensitive and wonderful and they have soft hair and soft skin. It's great, I love women. I have uh, Thor's hammer. Oh, I never smite on the first date, I'm not that kind of guy. Uh, I think that my trouble lies with finding a girl who matches in terms of both personality, you know. Do you think he got confused? Like when all the guys were together and they're talking about all the chicks they're fucking and his friend said, yeah, I smashed that. Do you think in his mind as a virgin, he thought they were being literal? Like, oh, that's what women like. L women like to get smashed. So he ran out to the store and he bought Thor's hammer and the next girl he brought into his room. The next woman he tricked into there. He literally smacked her ass in the head with a fucking foam Thor hammer. Geeked him. Like, I need to find the perfect girl. If she exists. My mom is a bit torn about sci-fi speed dating. Would you want me to find, like, a nice girl to bring home? I, I don't think that's the place to find a nice girl. On one hand, uh, she wants me to be happy. She wants me to find love. What kind of girl are you going to find at Comic-Con? What kind of girl? Who... We are girls go there. On the other hand, my mom likes me where I am right now, living at home with her. So uh, as far as she's concerned, like, you know, any woman in my life is a threat. What exactly do you think these girls are doing? These... Mom, why won't all these women fuck me? I bring them into my, my room, Mom with my Thor's hammers and my Steve Jobs book and I've got the Wii sitting out there, why won't these women let me touch their vaginas? Mom? You know that instead of doing drugs and drinking, they're reading comic books. Who knows what they're doing between pages, okay? <laughs> between Joe, pages? Joe, like, oh, Joe. let me turn a page and let me smoke a little bit of something. No, and then all day they are playing and they are learning. No, 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 and you're wrong. Wife. Wife. And you're... all they play together, so nice. I'm not looking for much. I just want to find a girl who will give me hugs and kisses and isn't my mother. I love you, Joey. I love you. Mama loves you, Joey. Come here and give Mama's mustache a kiss, Joey. Oh, Mama's gonna rub you later tonight. I got the butter, Joey. I know how you like when Mama rubs you, Joey. You don't need those other girls, Joey. Mama make lasagna for you. I want the best for you. 
always. Most of the people I've dated have been geeks. Those that... No, all the people I've dated have been geeks. Geeks have an understanding of the fantasy world that normal people don't. The fantasy is what makes it real. Deep love. The success rate we're having with sci-fi speed dating is pretty good. We're at one married couple, 10 engagements, and up to 50 couples dating seriously. Come on in, guys. Uh, I feel anxious, uh, nervous. <laughs> Somebody in chat, Jim has a thing for butter. Uh, there's one clip on YouTube, and I'll, I'll play it for you sometime. It's the, the reason I can't get it out of my head is there was this dude who did a documentary, and they're talking. He runs like a uh, S&M club in his basement at his home. And men pay him to fist them. He's very violent as S and M, like the really hardcore shit. And the the documentary guys are upstairs, and a client comes by. And the dude, the dude grabs a tub of butter, and he goes into the basement. And then, like maybe three or four minutes later, you hear somebody screaming like they're being murdered. And all I can visualize is this guy's fist going up his ass to the elbow. And then the dude comes up after like 30 minutes of all this screaming and crying. And the documentary guy's sitting there like, holy shit, what the fuck have I gotten myself into? And the dude starts crying. He starts crying about how horrible his life is and how he has to pay his bills by fisting ugly men up their ass with a butter-filled fist. That's why I can't get that image out of my head. I don't know exactly what I'm going to find. Hopefully, I will exit not being alone. Gentlemen, treat the ladies with respect. Ladies, do not use this as a perfection on your friend zone technique, okay? <laughs> Don't practice that shit here. So we've got Joey. He hasn't had a lot of dating success. He has trouble finding girls if he can't bring back home to Ma. The dates are three minutes long. Every three minutes, guys, you're gonna follow the arrows on the floor. Do you understand? My expectations today, uh, I'm trying to set them as low as possible because basically I do not want to set myself up for failure. Everybody deserves to have fun in sci-fi speed dating, so enjoy yourselves. Unless you're fling on leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speed dating begins in a couple seconds. Three, two, one. Go. Sit in front of any guy you like. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am the nefarious number 22. Oh, that's my favorite number. This is perfect. <laughs> OK, hit girl, calm down. Calm down a little bit. I need to go over my list of things here. Now, uh, this is important for when you date me. Question one, how much do you like Steve Jobs? Okay, question number two, say hypothetically, I lived with an obese woman who may or may not be my mother, and uh, she may or may not rub me with butter at nights. Uh, how would you feel about that? Those are the two main questions. They're really the important ones. No, you're just saying things. That was my sports number in school. Did you play any sports in high school? No, I was the most unathletic person in the world. Really? Yeah, uh, I had asthma, or at least my mom believed that I had asthma as a kid. So she basically like was like, don't go out. It's scary out there. Wow, the fat Jewish mother didn't want her son to play athletics because he had asthma. Is this, is this Kyle Blaflowski's cousin? <laughs> I've got asthma. <laughs> is that what we're dealing with here? Why, why? Why wouldn't I be at Comic-Con? I mean, like, what are you here for? Games, comics, movies, everything. Everything. I don't know what it is, but, like, something inside my brain is just like... Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, all right. So, you're a big uh, video game fan? Yes. Is this a good stress reliever when I'm, like, ready to kill somebody? Just, nope, gonna shoot zombies all day. We had a lot of the same interests, but he was also, like, interested in everything, kind of like I am. He was really sweet. Are your ears moving? Um, <laughs> yeah, Nico, maybe. You know the brainwave ears? I, that's a thing? Oh, Jesus Christ. I see that you also have ears. Do you, like, think like... I see you also have ears, like that skinny white girl had, but you're black and fat, and I don't like that. I'm not racist or anything, but go, get away from me. Get, my mama wouldn't like you. All right, we, we belong to a different tribe. Go away. Go. Where's that fat? Where's that white girl with the cat ears? Certain thoughts and like they just start moving. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm just really nervous. <laughs> it's really hard to tell who would bring home to mom. Uh, just because they're all in costume right now. I feel like you just... He actually said that. This is a, this is a mid-20s mid male. Okay. 
he's at a speed dating event. And the main thing on his mind is, I, I want to make sure I didn't mishear this. It wasn't, who's the cutest girl that I can fuck at this stupid event? It was, who can I bring home to meet my mother? It's really hard to tell who would bring home to mom. Who can I bring home to my mom? Oh, this girl wants to touch my pee-pee, but I got to call mama up first to make sure it's okay. Mama, can she touch my pee-pee? Do I need to bring her home to have lasagna with you first, mama? Uh, just because they're all in costume right now, I feel like you generally know what you're going to get into even before the conversation begins. It's kind of weird how that works. I have a great polar bear joke that ends with an icebreaker. Okay, go for it. That's it. It's right there. Uh, oh, I... Gotcha. Uh... Me no speaky English. <laughs> she fucking walks away. Real funny joke, nerd. You go hang out with your mama. On the next date, please. So, Doctor Who? Oh my god. Yeah, what's Yes. I was so excited. Like, dressed up as a doctor. And everyone's gonna think I'm like the professor or something. I'm not the doctor. Well, I mean, that's true. Like, you just walk down the street and, like, oh, there goes that professor with her bow tie. <laughs> Where is she going? It's Saturday. I thought he was adorable. The only reason Asian chicks show up at Comic Con events like this is not because they're into it, okay? They all run laundry mats and they're looking for business. She's not there to get a date. She was there to measure his shirt size, so she knew what to charge him later. He was sweet, and um, I was like comfortable talking to him. Comic Con is like a time warp. It is. Time warp. Wibbly wobbly, timey warmy. <laughs> the Doctor Who girl definitely seemed uh, very warm and uh, very kind and very beautiful blue eyes. So, are you supposed to be the Aunt Jemima Captain America? <laughs> Sorry, I just see the apron. You're supposed to be, uh, oh, the burger show. Yes! Yes! You're the first person! Am I really? Yes, Louise! Jesus, thank God someone just, like, decided to just, like, bust that out. She's, you know, kind of seemed, you know, cute. What are you into? Uh, everything. Star Wars, comic books, uh, you know, sci-fi movies, uh, video games. Uh, that kind of stuff. How about you? I play D&D a lot with my friends. <laughs> you said D&D, right? Yeah. I've always wanted to play D&D. Are you ever the dungeon master? Actually, no, because it's too, it's too hard. <laughs> Silly boy, they don't let women be dungeon masters. You're really new at this. <laughs> what a weird question. To I love her reaction. She actually was awestruck that he asked that. Like, are you serious, nerd? Do you think another geek is going to let a woman run a campaign? What, what planet are you from? Are you from Mars? Quiet, silencio. Shut your pie holes. Gentlemen, you're going to stand up. You're going to come over to this table. Ladies, you're going to stand up. You're going to go to that table. and Go, run. Now, you've been keeping score on your scorecards, OK? You're going to find the pieces of paper on the table that correspond to the people you like. All right, go. It's actually all the giant blur right now. Thank God that they let you make notes because, like, it's just a lot to take in. Joey nails it. Every girl writes their number on his paper. He came out swinging. He was given roses. Are, are you fucking for real? Maybe they all were looking for a gift. Maybe they got confused. They mistook speed dating for find a new gay best friend. <laughs> Why? He got every number? Oh. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm dumbfounded. I really don't know how to respond to that. It looks like he's pretty solid to get a perfect match. Gentlemen, when you are done, you will have a seat. <laughs> okay, ladies. At this point in time, you're going to head over there and grab the pieces of paper that have your number on it. Quick. Okay, you know what? Let me address the audience right now. Anybody in chat that's having trouble finding a girlfriend. All right, all, all the, the incel bros that are out there. Take a look at him. He looks like uh, the body double for the AVGN right now with his profile. He got every girl's number at this fucking convention. You can get pussy. If this guy can get a room full of women to give them his, their phone numbers, him, this guy, you could bang away until you can't even move your pelvis anymore, until you're so sore you need to lay down. All right, there is hope. This man should give you hope. Quick run. Please ensure that you have the correct piece of paper. Damn. Oh, I actually put on five. Uh, it's, uh, that's kind of crazy. I'm feeling pretty great. All right, ladies. I kind of need you to spread out in front here. Now, this is a competition. You need to be fast. That's the key, OK? The Doctor Who girl is absolutely amazing and a uh, very beautiful girl. Uh, now, I'm just really confused because that Asian girl wrote down the number to a laundromat. I don't, I don't know what she, and it lists a price next to it. 
I, I'm confused as to why she would do that. I'm actually starting to get a little bit nervous. Find your perfect match. So Joey got his eye on Doctor Who, and there's a good chance she likes him. The problem is every girl wants him. Whoever gets to him first wins. Go, find your perfect match. You're very fast. <laughs> Dude, she wants to fucking jump on your cock. That woman did it. She must have been in the track and field team in high school. All right. She she just she just did the 100 meter dash to get on your cock. All right. Fuck mama. Stop calling mama. Bring her up to your room and fuck that. Yeah, I, I run a lot. Quick, 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 quick. So... So you come here often? Actually, yeah. So oh. Only my second time, but yeah. Um, I will say that I had uh, someone else in mind, the Doctor Who girl, actually. Uh, but I also like this. Well, I don't. I, I, I got to be fair here. I don't think he could outrun the other chick. <laughs> I don't think Doctor Who here has got the physicality to beat her off the starting line. Maybe just go ask her, you know, by yourself. This girl too. Maybe the Doctor Who girl was just the one who's got the best first impression. Like, a perfect date for me would just be cooking and then sitting around, like, kicking each other's butts in Mario Kart, so... <laughs> I completely missed the entire uh, cooking part, maybe because I'm a guy, so I'm just like... <sighs> this guy, I swear to God. So, she runs over to him, and then she basically says, My idea of a perfect date is making you dinner, cleaning your house, playing video games with you, and then just sucking your cock. I just want to sit in between your legs and suck your dick for a few hours. That's, that's my dream date. <laughs> it's, what, why are you still sitting here, Joey? Why are you not back in your room already? Like, just kicking butts in Eric. That works too. I like cooking. I don't, I don't get a feminist thing out of it. It's not like, oh my god, I won't cook for you. It's like, I like cooking, so uh -huh. I'll do it. Right. She loves to cook, so... Yeah, that's definitely the two qualities that I think I'm looking for. Uh, a girl who plays video games and a girl who's domesticated, so I can bring her home to mom. Uh, well, I mean, if you're into video games and everything like that, I mean, like... I've got lots of video games back at my place and a comfortable couch. Uh, so uh, how about this weekend? Okay. Playing video games. I don't know. It may seem awkward. What a nerd. Hey, hey, woman that literally threw herself from across the room at me. Do you want to play Mario Kart? <laughs> Joey, she wants to play with a joystick, but not one attached to a game console. Wake up here. Okay. Come on. Wake up here. You got to You got to You got to wake up a little bit and figure out what the fuck is going on. It is the first date, but I'm actually going to have her meet mom and come back to my place. Everyone's going to be so jealous of us. Hello. Hey. How are you? How are you? Good to hear? Eh, tired. But it's coming on! Hey. So. Okay. I'm not sure if this will be my most awkward first date, but all signs say that yes, yes it will. Are you fucking for real, dude? Are you are you fucking with us? Is this guy fucking with us? This woman threw herself at you. She would have let you she would have let you fuck her behind the trash cans outside the conference room. And you're bringing her home to meet mommy. Hey. Hi, you too. I'm hey. Emily. Hi. Uh, yeah, meeting the parents on a first date was a little bit weird, but, you know, we'll see. Beautiful. So you like to play video games? I am a gamer, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, you like the games like my little Joey does? Oh, he's bing bing wahooing all night long. Isn't that right, baby boy? Oh, Joey sits around in his little underoos and plays the bing bing wahoos. It's nice that a girl wants to play the bing bing wahoos with my Joey. Maybe you can rub him with the butter. I have some food here for you. Just a bottle of water would be nice, actually. A bottle of water? Okay, here. Thank you. So, Emily, are you originally from New York? Or... Uh, no, I'm not. I'm from Delaware. I'm just up here for college. Oh, where do you go? Uh, I go to Columbia. Oh, great. Ivy Lee. Wow. <laughs> even, the, even the parents are stunned. They're like, how did our son get a woman that isn't morbidly obese? to walk into the apartment and she goes to an Ivy League school and she's fairly well dressed so she probably comes from money honey did you did you hit your head on something do you need us to call a doctor so, 
Hal, Hal, get on the phone and call an ambulance. I think Joey's abducted an injured woman and dragged her to the apartment again. We're actually just gonna go and play some play? video games. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go. <laughs> you never know. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you have the most sensual screech I of a heartbeat. <laughs> I hate it when you get the long ones, you know where to put it, right? Dude, pick up on that. Dude, come on. Come on, Joey. Come on, Joey. Seriously. That, that's, uh, that's not even an innuendo. She's begging you to fuck her, Joey. Put the controller down. This would probably be a very easy way to get friend-zoned to play video games on a first date. Ha! <laughs> I think computer games are actually a great way to loosen up. What the... <laughs> I am hoping and I think it's going to turn into something a little bit more romantic, but, you know, we'll see. It's only the first date. I want to apologize in advance for what's about to happen. Oh, shoot. What? Yep. How did that even... Yep. You won second, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Out of two. Yay! <laughs> okay, you don't want an empanada off the road. This motherfucker had a woman in his room that legitimately said to him, I don't know what to do with the long ones. I'm not sure where to put them. And this dense fuck, this stupid motherfucker, <laughs> she basically was saying, let me suck your dick. Tell the cameraman to go away so I can suck your cock right now, Joey. I want to suck your bing bing woohoo stick right now, Joey. I'm going to show you how to reach a new high score. It's not one that's kept up on the video game screen. It's one you shoot in my mouth, Joey. I want you to shoot your fucking high score into my mouth, Joey. And he's bringing her out to have lunch with mom. I'm good, but thank you. They look delicious. Are oh, you leaving already? Yeah, I have midterms oh, to study quick. for. I'm oh. so sorry. Yes. It's great to meet you. Thank you. Same here. Bye-bye. Okay, I don't even have good. to be here. This is your house. <laughs> Take Bye. care. Bye. Thank you. Good luck. It's a very pretty girl. Forget the old culture, whatever you think. This is United States of America, free country. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly I mean, what that means. Coming from your father, it means it doesn't matter if she's a bird. Uh, let me translate for you, honey. Your father saying, thank God you're not a fag. All we were worried about it, Joey. Your dad would go to the, the church and talk to the priest every day. Oh, please, sweet baby Jesus. I think my son's a fucking faggot. Your daddy's so happy. Your daddy's so happy right now, Joey. I love watching and seeing the people connect. Just because they weren't fast enough during the perfect match doesn't mean anything. So Joey's playing the game here. After the date with the perfect match, Hi, uh... he finds the Doctor Who girl is interested in and sets up another date. You picked me. I picked you. you know. I just, I didn't like get over to your class now. Yeah. No, I mean, if you're interested, like we can, we can drink coffee or do yeah. something. Why not? Definitely, I mean, definitely. I'd love that. Okay. Yeah. So I actually have a second date to come out of Comic-Con speed dating. I'm Ari, by the way. I'm Joey. So I'm not really too sure uh, what to expect, probably because they really had a date at Comic-Con. Uh, but I mean, what's more romantic than the Javits Center? Wait a minute. Okay, back the fuck up. Something's going on here. He had an Ivy League educated, skinny, rich chick want to basically desperately fuck him and he sunk that by introducing her to his parents and he comes back to comic-con and he meets this doctor who chick and he's not bringing her to meet mom and dad is this some kind of secret like undercover alpha nerd and we're all being played here like does joey get the chicks that he doesn't like and he introduces is mom like joey's cock blocker and that's how he gets rid of the girls he really doesn't like and then he takes the other chicks out for coffee at Comic-Con? Is that what's happening? Did you see that? No, I didn't. The KFC guy that was like, one of the Avengers. <laughs> I was too busy watching Spider-Man I... doing ballet. Did you see that? <laughs> no, I missed <laughs> One of us is talking, the other one's like, oh my god, this is the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> we definitely had a good time. She's still really into Doctor Who and whatnot. Like, I think she told me that she bought a plushie today that talks. Uh, I think there's definitely a very good chance that I will see her again. Okay, how many people can say that? My first, like one of my first dates, I went out with like 
Peter Parker. Right? How cool is that? You, uh, don't, you don't have the face, the I, mask? I do. Uh, you have to put it on. You can't make me put this on. Does Joey know the secret? The secret about fat girls? The secret that if you pick a fat girl up, she'll work twice as hard to please you? I, th I think this motherfucker... I think this motherfucker has some secret information. He's not sharing with the other nerds at Comic-Con. Okay, only because you've got a great smile. I'm gonna try putting it on. Because you're kind of cute like that. Oh, thank you. I'm excited to get to know him. Uh, he seems really nice and just being super smart. Uh, it kind of helps that he's cute. I figure maybe we'll go find crime and I'll put on my mask and you can watch me yeah. fight while you sit there and look pretty. I really can't say right now uh, who I would choose between the two girls, but you know, gay love is great. It's the best thing to happen to my love life. I'm a lucky girl. I do it all. <laughs> Hey, it's me, Joey, and what speed dating at Comic-Con taught me was that, you know, it's very hard to ha bring girls over the house uh, to introduce them to my mom or to hang out here at my house uh, if my mom's going to basically be questioning whether or not they're virgins or what their motives are with me or anything like that. And so basically... Holy shit. Could you... <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine going on a date with some dude, if you're a chick, and you get... You get he brings you to the, the apartment where he lives with mom. And you sit down at their little kitchen table, and mom, the first thing she says to you after hello is, so tell me, honey, tell me, tell, tell mama Joey, is your pussy intact? Have you had any, have you had any ding-dongs up there, sweetheart? I need to make sure Joey's got a clean pussy that he can put it in. <laughs> oh, wow. What this entire experience taught me is that it's time to move out. And so I'm basically in the process of uh, moving out into my own apartment, so that's exciting, uh, where I will be able to, you know, bring a girl over and play Tetris and not have to worry about my mom coming in and serving us tang and snacks. Oh my god, yes, I do want more. I think we're going to watch a few of these. I, I got to be honest with you, they're pretty good. Uh, all right, let's see. We got a few super chats. I'll, run, I'll read through them quick, and then we'll get, we'll get to another episode. I don't know what the fuck is going on. That dude... I had no hope for him, and the entire room full of women wanted him. And then he's picking and choosing. Talk about... <laughs> what the fuck? He's got an Ivy League uh, chick that wants to basically rape him. And he's like, no, I don't want you. Get away from me. Mom, cut and punt her out of the fucking living room. I want the thick Doctor Who girl. That's the chick I'm going to fuck while I wear my Spider-Man mask. All right, I, w I want to smack her ass with Thor's hammer while I drill her from behind. That's the one. That's the winner. All right. From Fe Phoenix76, you're all sleeping. This is that alpha, alpha nerd. Sheepdog speaks 1776. All these women speed dating remind me of the foam adventure. Uh, only missing is, The only thing missing is the yiffing. Mandar, rise up. From Jaka88, uh, sent a link. You think that's bad? I, I really want to stick with this right now. Uh, we'll maybe take a look at the link later on, because I, I really, really want to watch more IGN dating show. From Mad Clock, I'd smash Joey's mom. Oh, do you like lasagna? Do you just want her to cook for you? You could probably just ask her. From Thuffman15, how much do you want to bet this man has a debauched Sonic Deviant uh, ridden Deviant art? Oh, uh, you could be right. He might he might have the most fucked up deviant art we could imagine. From Tobias PK, did I miss you talk about the fur fag that's niggered because we don't like dog fuckers? I, I haven't seen that one yet. Well, again, maybe take a look at it later on. Mr. Curie, what the fuck is going on with Worski CRP and everyone else? I I don't know. I haven't really been paying attention. I've been focused on Photon, Photon and the IG Undating Show. How you doing, nigger nerd? I'm doing great. And uh, I believe we're caught up. Uh, Caleb, yep, we are caught up. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Let me find... Are there more after this, or do we have to go back? We might have to go back. All right, let me let me find more episodes of this fucking amazing show. Uh, let's try seven. Is there seven? Yes, there is. The Ansonator? The Ansonator real-life hero. A <laughs> what? This guy made his own hero up. He calls himself the Ansonator 
And he's a superhero EMT Taekwondo beast. I I can't imagine why he's not getting girlfriends. <laughs> it's a mystery. The Ansonator. Hey, baby. You heard about Superman? You heard about Spider-Man? Well, let me tell you about the Ansonator. <laughs> I'm the Ansonator, baby. Oh, I'm the magical Taekwondo doing EMT. Here to save people from heart attacks and fuck pussy. And I'm all out of heart attacks, baby. <laughs> there are no people dying around here, so it's time to go muff diving. All right. This is episode seven of Geek Love. Oh, boy. Are we going to find a nice girl for you, Antonator? The That's the voice this dude uses when he puts them in the well. <laughs> Just <laughs> That's the voice he uses. That's the last thing the victim hears. Ansonator, he is a superhero EMT Taekwondo beast. I may be a superhero, but I'm so nervous. Geeks know who they are, and they're cool with it. <laughs> it's very hard to find someone that actually understands South Park humor, especially. And then when I talked to them about Lord of the Rings, they were like, what kind of rings? Ladies, go to something that was your perfect match right now. Now, I see what the racists are saying in chat, okay? I get it. It's going to be awkward when he brings a chick over to his house, and they're making whoopee. All right, they're getting down to it. The nitty-gritty lovemaking is happening. Afterwards, she wants to clean up a little bit, and she learns that he has a designated shitting street rather than a bathroom. I understand that's a little uncomfortable. All right, but you need you need to understand, this is the Ansonator. All right, he's a pussy slayer. Speed dating in our world is different than the real world because at Comic-Con, you're in a room with people who are all huge fans of something just like you, so there's that commonality that you can build from. In the outside world, I'm kind of more awkward, and it's hard to meet people. Outside, you're pretty much... Oh, also, I see some people saying, oh, I recognize somebody, or that's the same chick from the last episode. I'm fairly certain IGN just filmed all of these at the same convention. They probably went to, like, one or two conventions filmed all their episodes in like a day or two because i bet they do a bunch of speed dating all at once like four or five sessions a day kind of thing so we're probably gonna see we're probably gonna see the same people keep popping up keep an eye out for the fat homestuck girl you're probably gonna notice her crying in the background next to the wall of shame uh quote unquote a freak but here you can see the real person the true person geek love <laughs> over 18 yes single yes guys or girls girls Oh, dude. Oh, this Jedi is fucking savage. Oh, just walks around right up to women. Hey, you over 18? You fucking horny? Come with me. <laughs> walks up to this dude. Hey, you over 18? Single? Are you a fag? That's basically what he just said. You a fag? And when the guy said, no, I'm into chicks, he looks him over. I don't know about that, bro. You're wearing a latex costume and you call yourself the Antonator. Are we sure you like the ladies? the hell are you? <laughs> I'm a super EMT, and this is going to be awesome. I, yeah, I have to see that again. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, <laughs> just, <laughs> that's so devastating. Uh, watch it. Watch, he just walks up and he doesn't believe him when he says he likes women. Geek love. <laughs> Over 18? Yes. Single? Yes. Guys or girls? Girls. <laughs> Dude, I, I gotta tell you, as a Master Jedi, all right, the Force is telling me you like it up the ass. All right, this outfit, this outfit uh, speaks to me and it says Darth Maul in the bathroom at a glory hole around 11 o'clock in the evening at this convention. That's what that outfit says to me. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm a super EMT and this is gonna be awesome. I am the Ansonator. I'm Anthony, I'm 24, and I am an awkward geek. Because I'm an EMT, I have identifying patches on both sides. This is actually the universal sign for emergency medical service. Oh, God. You know what this reminds me of? I want to. This is a personal heartbreaking story, but this is what this reminds me of with his shitty fucking costume. He's wearing his EMT outfit, and all he did to make it a superhero was put on a really crappy cape. 
uh, when I was a kid, they used to do uh, Halloween. This is back before everything became PC. They used to do Halloween uh, shit at uh, the elementary school I went to. All the kids would dress up. They do. They do. You know, they, they really put effort into it. You get candy. It was a fun time. It was just one of the holidays that was still celebrated. Well, one of the Halloweens, I think it's like third or fourth grade, I forgot. I just wasn't paying attention, and I forgot. And I showed up to school, and everybody is wearing an outfit. Everybody is wearing a fucking outfit, and I have nothing. So in my little retarded mind, I thought, I've got the most brilliant idea. And I went and grabbed the tape. And then I just put tape all over my face and my shirt and my pants. And I called myself Tape Man. Because it was the most lazy and half-assed thing I could think of to still get candy and not look like a retard without a costume. That's what this guy is. He's Tape Man. He is, he is Tape Man. Services, and then below I actually have my superpowers. One of my superpowers is CPR, and one of my other superhero powers is Taekwondo, which I used to kick total ass. My superhero name is Antinator. It's my nickname, Ant, and Terminator from the Terminator movie. I'll be back. Oh, you all miss the story. Oh, that's a shame. It's a shame you missed the story of Tape Man. Better hit that refresh button. The things that I'm passionate about are definitely South Park, Lord of the Rings, and Mickey Mouse. Oh boy, we're gonna go to Comic Con and speed dating, and we're gonna have such a good time and find a nice Minnie Mouse. It's hard finding a genuine person. I know I wasn't muted, chat, and I know it's on your end because I saw some people in chat responding to the story. So I'm sorry if Streamy fucked up on you, but you're going to have to hit the refresh button and watch it later. It's passionate about similar things that I am. I'm hoping to find someone to actually love me as well as my fandom, which I can share with them, and then we can just be one big happy family. I'm very passionate about South Park. Obviously, because I've got each and every one of them on my bed. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! You bastard! I have tried dating a few people in the fire department, but it went really, really bad, especially when they found out that I was really into South Park. And then when I talked to them about Lord of the Rings, they were like, what kind of rings? Oh, do you think he wears his cape to work? Do you think he's really committed to Ansonator? I mean, he's got the name patch up on the fucking EMT vest. <laughs> Could you imagine your car flips over on the highway and there's a massive fire, the gas tank explodes, your little daughter is burning to death in the passenger seat. She's screaming, Daddy, help me. It hurts so bad, Daddy, it hurts. And you're pinned with the fucking steering wheel catching your legs and holding you down. And all of a sudden, out of the corner of your eye, you see a poo in the loo with a fucking Superman cape running at your car at full speed. And the last thing you notice before the smoke takes you into that black, dark night is that he calls himself Ansonator and that you know your daughter is most likely going to die. So for speed dating, what kind of girl are you looking for? Girls think that it's actually adorable that I live with my mom. I am a sucker for the blondes, but yes. that doesn't mean that I'm going to dismiss all the other ones. I mean, I'm open to all suggestions. The thing that I'm looking for at sci-fi speed dating is to find that damsel in distress that I will be her superhero, and I will sweep her right off of her feet and then go on an awesome date. Geek, don't be in the corner too long. Once in a while, you got a werewolf out. You know what I mean? Ladies, await, and I have not drugged them. Good luck. Sci-fi speed dating is definitely going to spice up my, my dating life. This is so not what I'm used to. OK, welcome to sci-fi speed dating. You're all going to sit down in the chairs here. Ladies are going to sit in the chairs facing that wall. Everybody excited? Yeah, Raise your hand if you're really nervous. <laughs> okay, you got nothing to be nervous about. I'm extremely nervous. I may be a superhero, but I'm so nervous. Gentlemen, please have a seat for the girls. Do not start talking yet. Go. The Ansonator. Awesome. He's all costumed up, and the costume represents what he is, which is a superhero EMT taekwondo beast. 
I just, I really like the fact that Gabe here basically called the dude a fag. <laughs> just at the start of it. it. this I don't know who this Jedi guy is that runs his speed dating shit, but I almost think that like he hates nerds and he set this whole thing up just to make them miserable. Just to make them really uncomfortable and miserable. He's got a wall of shame. He makes all the fat people stand against. He, he basically calls desperate men gay just to fuck with their heads. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's like he's a fucking uh, sadist, and he set this up for revenge. A little less pelvis thrust. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, you ready? ready? Three, two, one. Speed date. Oh, no. Well, I am cosplaying as my own superhero. Your own superhero, yeah. the yep. Oh, you pronounced it correctly. Extra points. Yeah. I'm actually a super EMT. If you're trying to, like, figure out what, what the costume was, that's what it is. I am an actual superhero. I'm a real the costume was. That's what it is. I am an actual superhero. I'm a real EMT, which I am an uh that's probably part of the problem with your game there, bro. Uh walking up to a woman and saying I'm an actual superhero uh probably confuses her. She probably thinks you're insane and uh she doesn't want to deal with crazy. I get it, you're an EMT, everybody loves that. Uh, but starting with, I'm an actual superhero, sounds arrogant as fuck, and makes you seem partially insane. She's probably thinking of an exit strategy as we speak. Makes it even better. I'm a real EMT. That's what this is for. I actually saved someone's life and I got an award for it. I took the CPR class. How'd you like it? I took it mainly because I wanted to use a defibrillator. <laughs> I'm a super EMT. Super EMT? Yeah. I was like, if I call 911 and then you come out like, I am saved because not only do I have an EMT, I'm a super EMT. That's right. What's your superpower? My superpower. That's not actually a costume. This girl is retarded. <laughs> she has to wear the safety helmet to protect herself from hurting herself. She's. This isn't a costume. She's got a mental disability. Maybe he's got a shot with her. Are CPR and Taekwondo. He is pretty awesome. He made his own superhero costume. Well, actually, my grandma helped me a lot. I'm looking for the girl with that spark. But... Maybe if she dates him, she can use the name Sped Racer. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what she can call herself. She can drive his ambulance as he's hanging out the back and just scream out the fucking window Move out of the way, I'm Sped Racer, and my retard boyfriend's here to save people. It does matter if she has the same bandwidth as me, because, well, that'll just make it even more awesome. So, favorite movie? The Matrix. Okay, that's one of my favorites, but it's not really, like, up there. My favorite's actually Lord of the Rings. I also love Lord of the Rings. My favorite's Gollum. I love Gollum. Do you like Lord of the Rings? I do. I can imagine you do. You look like one of the creatures out of it. Are you cosplaying as an Ent? Because <laughs> it looks like you've got gnarly tree bark and twigs growing out of your head. Do birds nest there? Maybe you're a fan of the trolls. I can tell a little bit from your face. You've probably put on some prosthetic. Oh, no, wait, that's natural. You're not cosplaying at all. Who's your favorite character? Um, I like Legolas. Mine is Gollum. Gollum is way better. I'm sorry. Do you like Lord of the Rings? Yes, I do like Lord of the Rings. Who's your favorite character? Um... Follow-up question. Do you like your father? Because generally women that dye their hair and have piercings like this have daddy issues. And if the answer to that is yes, can I get your number? Please say Gollum. Please say Gollum. Hi. Anthony. Who are you? I'm actually my own superhero. Your own superhero? I'm my own superhero. I'm actually real, too. I have a thing for blondes. I don't know what it is, but it is my kryptonite. What's your favorite thing so far? Uh, I got to hear Sean Astin, Sam from Lord of the Rings talk. Oh my yeah, god. There is extra points. High five. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I was pretty excited. I love Lord of the Rings. My favorite character is Gollum. Gollum? Oh, I can see that. I yeah. can see that. It's pretty damn enjoyable. <laughs> it was nice meeting you. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. I think she might have got confused. She probably runs one of the vendor stands, like selling hot dogs to them, and she just wanted to take a break and sit down and didn't realize it's a speed dating area. She said, Precious, from Gollum, my favorite character. Oh my god, that was so cool. I liked what he had to say, and I liked the idea behind the costume. And yeah, it was enjoyable to talk to him. Okay.
Ladies, I need you to stand up and go to that table and touch nothing. Gentlemen, stand up, go to that table and touch nothing, and then refocus on me. I'm confident. My number one is an actual blonde who is a huge fan of Lord of the Rings like I am. Now, ladies, I hope you It's so weird. She wrote down hot dogs, two for a dollar, outside <laughs> by the Thundercats display. Is that is that her way of hitting on me? I don't understand what that means. Is it a coded message? Enjoy this part because this is the only time in your life the guys will take longer than you to finish. <laughs> That's so they're like, wrong. They're like, wait, what? That's a sex joke, you fucking nerds. Now sit up against the wall of shame. Gabe needs to take pictures of your suffering. Of course you fucking geeks don't get sex jokes. You don't even get sex. <laughs> My favorite thing is when the guys don't get that joke. What are you talking about? Oh. My number two, she's a speed racer from the Cartoon Network show, The Mach 5. She had a bubbly personality, and I like that. Now, I need you to get your papers and return to your positions. Go quick. All right, ladies, I need you to compare your papers against your scorecards. If you find someone that you liked who liked you back, that's a perfect match. We're going to do a little competition here to get a three-minute date with your perfect match, OK? Another three-minute date. Dun, dun, dun. Ladies, go to somebody that was your perfect match right now. Go. Speed is the key here. Yes, sprints, all of you. It's amazing. Run. Make it look impressive. Hurry, girls, hurry. 30. Oh, don't look at her, dude. She's just there to sell hot dogs. <laughs> hey, hey, Ansonator, there's your date. Nobody. Nobody loves you. Go stand against the wall. You see that empty chair? That's your future. I hope you like masturbating, because that's what every night ahead of you is going to be full of. Nobody's sitting there, Ansonator. Seconds to sit in front of a perfect match. 25 seconds. Gentlemen, if there's not somebody sitting in front of you, again, I apologize. It doesn't mean is this is this show bullying by IGN? <laughs> is this, I'm just picturing like the Dorito Pope sitting in his office one day, and he's like, you know, those fucking assholes on the internet always making the Mountain Dew jokes about me. Well, you know what? Jeff Keeley's done taking their shit. Give me that fat Gabe Newell-looking motherfucker. We're gonna put a dating show on, and I'm gonna make these people kill themselves. Out of despair and loneliness and rejection. You fuck with the Dorito Pope, you make all these jokes about our shitty reviews. It's time to take some scalps. It's over because you wrote your contact info on the pages of the girls you liked. Girls, you wrote your contact info on the pages of the guys you liked. Everybody that does not have somebody in front of them, please step out now. I appreciate it. I hope you had fun. I was hoping I would get to hear my precious one more time, even if it was just for that three minutes. The fact that I felt a real spark between certain people and they didn't feel the same way kind of maybe knocked it down a few notches. You know, it's, it's got to be frustrating to want to be loved so bad. We all know what it's like when we're alone and we're looking for that special someone. So it's got to be frustrating. The poor guy's got to be feeling it. Oh, he loves it. That fat fucking Jedi Master loves this shit. Don't doubt for a minute that it doesn't fill his nights with warmth. That he gets to look at these people and think, thank fucking God I wasn't standing against that wall of shame. Somebody get Jeff on the phone. He's going to have a good laugh at this. <laughs> oh, poor Asinator. You know, business opportunity for all the hookers out there in the world. Maybe start, you know, advertising your services at Comic-Con. Turns out lots of people don't get pussy at this event. Probably a good business market to expand into. I definitely feel a little discouraged, but at the same time, it's the same thing when I fight, when I fight super villains. When I can't succeed once, I just keep going again. You know, I hope Anthony takes the opportunity with the girls that did like him. I hope he gives them a call. He's got a built-in second chance right there, and maybe he just needs more than three minutes. I know I do. <laughs> this guy! This fucking guy! Oh, yeah, that's a sad, lonely fuck, winks at the camera. By the way, I'm here to reap the souls of nerds. I am Satan incarnate, come to Earth in the flesh to reap their fucking souls. So I didn't get a perfect match, and I was a bit disappointed. 
But afterwards, I noticed I had a few numbers. And one girl loves South Park as much as I did. Her name is Sarah, and on our first date, we actually spent the entire time going back and forth with South Park quotes. How has this not been kickstarted? How does somebody not have a Patreon to do this? I don't know if it was intentional on the part of Gabe here to make nerds cry, but somebody needs to do this with that fucking intention. And alter it up a little bit. Make them read out the list so everybody in the room can see they got nobody. And then film it and put it up on YouTube. And you will become a millionaire overnight. I'm saying you should be predatory towards nerds at comic conventions and make a dating show with the sole explicit goal of making them cry. And it was really fun. It feels amazing to actually meet someone they can share an intellectual connection with, especially about South Park and Lord of the Rings, which are my two favorite things. Sci-fi speed dating definitely helped me increase my self-esteem, so I'm glad that I did it. <laughs> Who knows what the future could hold? Maybe girlfriend? Maybe even more? Oh, I have a feeling your future holds an exit bag wrapped around your head and a very confused person coming to investigate the smell. I'm sorry, Ansonator. I don't have a good feeling about where things are going in your dark adventure into the future. Godspeed. We, we appreciate your service. We appreciate that you save people's lives. Don't get me wrong. But it's not looking good. It's not looking good, uh, Duder. Not looking good at all. All right. I, I am enjoying this. I don't know about you, chat, but uh, this show is this show is something else. I'll tell you that much. Oh, okay. We got a few. We got a few uh, Super Berries. Caleb LL Show. So I have a theory. Jim doesn't exist. Jade is actually Jim. That shitty headphone she wears has a built-in voice changer. That's why he won't buy a new mic. Daddy Jim is actually Mommy Jim. You're less gay. <laughs> now, chat, glad I could help. I actually have a... a what is it called? Uh, it's one of those, like... It, it's not the shitty, shitty headset. It's a little snowball mic or whatever the fuck it is. It costs like 100 bucks. I've had that for three years. I've used it once. Um, I just... I like my shitty... $20 Logitech headset. I've stuck with it this long. I don't see a reason to not just keep on keeping on. From Thuffman15, Retarded Girl, what's your superpower? Ansonator, shitting in the street before I pull your dead daughter out of a burning car. It's a hell of a pickup line. It's a, it's a way to make the women wet. From Jason Gee, JF calls this the potato harvest. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I could imagine he might. Uh, why, why am I nowhere? If this geek shit, uh, is this geek shit fucked up or am I just too high? No, it is fucked up. From Reno Mills, Mr. Mediocre, the hot Columbia University girl thing is not a farce. I live in New York City and all I can say is that the bars uptown are flooded with Columbia girls and the bars downtown are flooded with NYU girls. These schools are great. And finally, from... Phoenix76, I think we read this one already. You're all sleeping. That is the alpha. Alpha nerd. All right. Oof. Oh, my God. All right, let me... Uh, well, you know what? Let me just... Let me do a poll. We've watched... We've watched a few episodes. But let me... Let me... Let me pull the audience and see what they're thinking. Because uh, I'm enjoying myself. So I'm fine with continuing watching this. Chat, you tell me. Do you want more of this or not? Because uh, IGN's got quite a few episodes of sad, lonely people getting broken-hearted for our amusement. Uh, Jeff Keeley's Revenge, Gabe Newell's Cuckery. Uh, you can—I don't know how, wh whatever subtitle you want to give it, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Just cast your vote now, and tell us: Do you want to watch more or not? I'll give you a minute, because uh, I definitely do want to watch more of this. I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. Yeah, I, I can already see we've got an overwhelming majority. Uh, 241 to 16 want more IGN dating. Uh, yeah, no, I understand it. I understand it. It is a very sad show. At the core of it, it is a very, a very sad show. All right, let me see. I'll start looking through the episodes. We'll find a good one. Okay, uh, we got a couple female ones. 
Oh. Jimmy loves superheroes, especially Superman, and his passion has led this artistic geek to write... Oh, he wrote his own comic. Well, we've got an Artur. All right, let's see. Let me get that set up. We'll go to episode four of Geek Love, Heart of Steel, uh, with the best name on it, Jimmy. We'll see what Jimmy's up to. We'll see if Jimmy's getting some, some pussy at the Comic-Con event. All right, here we go. Back into it with another episode of the IGN dating show, Geek Love. Gentlemen, let's go. I'm Jimmy, and I am a huge Superman geek. Jimmy looked like what I would expect Jimmy Olsen of 2012 to look like. I'm always hoping that I'm going to meet the woman of my dreams. You don't know who Jimmy Olsen is? Do you know who that is? No. You don't know who Jimmy Olsen is? No. What the hell is going on? Well, my guess on that, Jimmy, would be the fact you're wearing a bow tie to a dating event. That's my first clue on what might be going on here. <laughs> Maybe that's the only clue we need. Dating normal people sucks. So you, you gotta find the people in your world. You have to find your inner geek. And I helped her bring her geek out. And I did it with bull whips. That's why she's wearing all the chains and shit. I beat her when we get home. Over 18? Yep. Single? Yep. Guys or girls or cheerleaders? Cheerleaders. All right. Over 18? Yes. Single? Yes. Guys or girls? Ladies. Ladies? Oh, yeah. oh God, Gabe is just fucking vicious. Do you notice the first the first guy is a jock? Hey, you over eighteen? Yeah. What do you like? Huh? What kind of what kind of chick do you like to fuck, bro? He's like a oh, cheerleader, pussy. He's like, yeah, give me a fist bump. Walks up to Jimmy in his little bow tie. You over eighteen? Uh, guys or girls? Girls, really, really, Jimmy? You're into girls, are you? Are you sure, Jimmy? Impressive, Mr. Olson. Thank you. I'm Jimmy, I'm 26 years old, and I'm a huge superhero geek. Uh, yes, you are right. Somebody in chat said, he looks normal. He does actually look normal. He is somebody that should be able to go and get a girlfriend relatively easily. Uh, but we'll find out how he fucks that up. I have a feeling, based on all the Superman shit in his bedroom, that there, this gives me a clue there might be an underlying issue with Jimmy. We'll see. Maybe when he brings chicks up here... And ask them to wear the cape as they have sex. They get a little freaked out. I want you to pretend to be Clark Kent. And I'm going to be Jimmy Olsen. And I want you to peg me in my ass. And that's where they leave. I've got this little miniature Tom Welling from Smallville Superman figure that I'm working on. Uh, it's got the full costume and I got the head on eBay somewhere. And I've actually created uh, you know, a full cape that I'm hopefully going to attach at some day. I'm really interested in Superman and the mythology of that character and the movies and the comics and pretty much anything relating to the Man of Steel. I've even got a Superman tattoo on my arm. Uh, this is a Superman sweatshirt that I made when I was a young boy. Uh, okay, I'm getting the feeling autism is involved. Who the fuck saves a Superman sweatshirt they made? Look at the size of that. Was he three? Hey, hey, honey, uh, come take a look at the Superman clothes I made when I was four years old. And they're covered in ketchup and shit, but I kept them because the autism won't let me throw them away. As you can see, I didn't quite know how to draw the S when I was little, but I think I've gotten the hang of it now. When I was a young kid, that's when I started getting into the arts and just drawing and painting. And I think it was because I was interested in drawing Superman. I would just draw the character over and over again while I was watching these movies. So my love for art kind of came from my love for the character. So this is me as Jimmy Olsen. Every time I go to a convention, I dress up as Jimmy Olsen. Oh, gee. Chief. <laughs> wow, way to method act there. Holy shit. You can't be this involved in Superman. And the best Jimmy Olsen impression you can do is, Aw, oh, gee, Chief. Don't half-heart at us here, Jimmy. Okay? We know you live this shit. This is your life. We know you have a Jimmy Olsen impression that's more than, oh, gee, Chief. <laughs> what the fuck? I was in a serious relationship for a couple years. Uh, it was really great, it meant a lot to me, but the breakup was so 
it was just a complicated mess and it just really kind of caused me not to want to trust anybody. So I'm hoping that speed dating proves to be something worthwhile and fun that can kind of get me out and just meet people who are really interested in the things while I'm interested. Holy fuck, this guy's on a love quest. Are, are, are we looking at... <laughs> oh, 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 God. Oh, my God. Does he make... Does he make comic books about needing love? Does he make fucking comic books about needing love and give them to women? Jimmy Olsen. Is this why this has been so difficult for you? You're on your love quest to find a girlfriend or a, a boyfriend free girlfriend. Oof. Oh, Jimmy. Meet people who are really interested in the things I'm interested in. I'd like to meet a girl who's funny and interesting and into comics and movies and uh, certainly someone who's a little bit witty. And maybe someone who's into my artwork. It'd be fun to meet someone. How much do you want to bet that at least once in this dude's lifetime, he tried to convince his Chad friend. He, I bet he brought him over to his house. I bet he got him really fucking drunk. Like, really stupid drunk. Drunk to the point where you can't even see. Drunk to the point where once you fall asleep, you're not going to remember anything. That level of drunk. And he tried to get him to dress up as Superman and tried to orally please him. Do you th I get that vibe. I get that vibe that at least once in their relationship, that event happened. Who's maybe creatively inclined, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you think you're going to find the female version of you? Female version of me? At Comic-Con. You know, maybe that's what I'm looking for. Good luck, wow. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Oh, that's why he doesn't have sleepovers anymore. Nobody's sleeping over at Jimmy Olsen's house. They all know how it ends. Drunkenly in tears, wearing a Superman cape. I like it. Super Steve. I like it. Right? It's good. There. A basic comic book off you. Every geek's a geek at heart, and you always find something to love about each other. Sometimes it can be a little tough to find people that are into the exact same things, but by and large, it's not too tough to find somebody who at least gets it. Nerds rule! Nerds rule. Gentlemen, let's go. Here we go. go ahead I'm following you, man. My expectations for the speed dating session, I'm always hoping that I'm going to meet the woman of my dreams. Yes, guys, come on, keep filing in, get comfortable. Jimmy. Why is there a football fan at this event? Did, did he get lost? <laughs> this guy. Wait a minute. This isn't football. Wait a fucking minute. I don't see the 49ers. What the fuck is going? Chet, Chet, where are you? Why are all these fucking nerds around me? I don't know what the hell is good. They're all wearing costumes, the puffy little fuckers. What in the fuck is happening? Comfortable. Jimmy looked like personified what I would expect Jimmy Olsen of 2012 to look like. You know, he's a modern Jimmy Olsen. Everybody else is getting modernized. The background characters aren't. Alfred is still a butler. Lois Lane is still a bitch. First of all, thank you all for coming out, OK? Without you guys, I would actually have to pay to come to this convention. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, like this tall girl over there. You can't miss her. She's the tallest person in the room. This is sci-fi speed dating, okay? There's a few rules. One, keep it anonymous, okay? All of you have a number on your chest. Go by that. Keep track of the people you liked. If you liked number five, write down number five. A little tidbit about them so you can remember them, okay? Ladies. Oh, hey, it's Homestuck Girl. We know how it ends for her. <laughs> Look at her. She's already sitting by the wall of shame. You sit over there. You sit over there and you think... Uh, uh, underwater space Hitler, or whatever the fuck you called yourself. Stay the fuck away from Jimmy Olsen. A little tidbit about them so you can remember them, okay? Ladies, I'm going to ask you to please take a seat in any of the chairs facing me. Thank you. Gentlemen, please have a seat in front of any lady you choose. It doesn't matter. You'll have to talk to all of them. I hope that the girl's interested in Superman. That'll make or break everything. Everybody, your date starts in three, two, one, and speed date. Hi. I like your uh, Oh, well, thank you. Are you a Superman fan? I'm a Batman fan. I find myself attracted to you, miss. Maybe it's your mustache. It reminds me of my friend who won't sleep over at my house anymore. This one time, we got... Oh, well, wait. I shouldn't tell you about the drunken story where I dressed him up. <laughs> We're a Batman fan. Oh, jeez. What are you into? Big Superman fan. Do you know who Jimmy Olsen is? No. You don't know who Jimmy Olsen is? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you just strike out if you don't know who I am. You know, I feel... Oh, he keeps saying, oh, jeez, always. He sounds like fucking Morty. Like, now I can't get Rick and Morty out of my head. It's like Morty's trying to... Sl <laughs> Morty showed up at a Comic-Con event trying to get pussy, and nobody wants him. Oh, jeez, always.
Then I feel just like lost in a void. Hi. Yeah, nice to meet you. So, okay. Well, do you know who I am? Do you know Jimmy Olsen? Oh, okay. <laughs> do you know who that is? No. You don't know Jimmy Olsen? No, I'm sorry. Take a wild guess. He's somebody's pal. He is a big superhero's good friend. He wears a red cape. He's really strong. What? Red tornado. What the hell is that? What the hell is going on? Really, it's a joke. You got, this is all that's got to be a joke. You don't know who Jimmy Olsen is? Come on. You know who Superman is, right? Yeah, I know who Superman is. You know Lois Lane? Oh, so the other guy. The one the that no one guy. ever talks about. Oh, you're cosplaying as that dork nobody cares about. Nice costume, nerd. Excuse me, I think C. Hitler over there is trying to get my attention. I'll be right back, Jimmy. That's not funny at all. <laughs> Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Me too. Do you know who I am? Do you know Jimmy Olsen? You do? You're the best photographer ever. That's great. Yeah. Are you into the arts or movies? Uh, or? Oh, yeah, the movies, music, arts. What's writing. your favorite movie? Favorite comic book movie? I have to say the original Superman. We're talking about 1978. Are you saying that just because? No, because no, it's Olsen. the greatest That's... line when you know Lois falls out of the helicopter. It super flies up. And he goes, "I got you." She goes, "You got me. Who's got you?" So, greatest line in movie history. <laughs> greatest line. She was quoting Superman. She was pretty cool. Oh, Jimmy Olsen got a little bit of a boner there. Somebody actually saw a Superman movie, and he's in love. Hi. How you doing? I'm two. Two? Two. Like the number? For you, yes. For me? Yes. Are you joking? <laughs> she won't even give him her name. I'm two. Wait, two? That's your name? That's the number I'm giving you. Oh, dude, you might as well just get out of the seat now. You're not cracking this iceberg. All right, that's not happening. Oh, I see what you're okay. <laughs> What's your number? I'm 20, so T O. T O. For both of us. Uh, you're so. a Hoobian? A what? Are you a Hoobian? I don't know what that is. You don't know what a no. Do you know who Jimmy Olsen is? See, we're both, you know, both lost. No. I thought because Doctor Who they were. I oh, I see. Ties. You're confusing me with Doctor Who. Yeah. I'm it's okay. Sorry. I'm Jimmy Ol I'm, I'm Superman's pal. He wears a bow tie as well. Right. You know who Superman is, right? Come on now. Some people don't know. You'd be surprised. Some people don't know Superman? Oh, wow. If they're super hot and they hate Superman, that's something I'm willing to live with, really. I'm really willing to live with that because you can always train a dog new tricks. You can always get somebody to do You could train a dog new tricks. And IGN, I, whoever's editing this, nicely done. Nicely done, IGN. You can teach a dog new tricks. Immediately switches over to a picture of this gentleman. Nicely done, IGN. Develop an interest. Well, it was nice meeting you. Thank you. So. Have a good one. Everybody quiet, please. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Please. You've all been keeping track of who you liked on your scorecards, right? You're going to find the papers with the numbers on it of the people you like. You will write your first name, the number on your chest, and either your cell phone number or your email address, all right? Oh, my goodness. Run, two, three, go. So we get to the end of the session, and Jimmy, he's going through. He's got a lot of girls that are interested in him. Give me that number two. Oh, goodness, man. I'm only written my name down on one so far. Uh, there's another one or two that I'm considering, but I'm really torn. So I'm gonna hopefully figure that out in the next 20 seconds. People, be creative. Number two, really. I'm going to put a smiley face next to mine to kind of help. I think he's got this. He's just got to make a call. I was a little bit picky. The numbers I wrote down were 2 and 12. One was really tall and cute. <laughs> And the other one, I think, had red hair and was into Superman. Just wondering to myself, how's it all going to turn out? This is oh, this is a dilemma, isn't it? One of them he thinks is hot. The other one is not hot, but likes the geeky shit that he likes. Who do you think Jimmy's going to choose? Chat, will Jimmy let his dick think for him? Press 1 if you think so. If you think Jimmy's going to let the fandom speak for him, press 2. Will his dick lead the day? Or will his love of Superman lead the day? One or two. Let's see what. Let's see which one he goes for. Let's see how much of a man Jimmy is. I'm seeing a lot of ones. I'm seeing a fuck ton of ones and a few twos. Let's find out what Jimmy went for. Did Jimmy go for something to empty his balls into, or something to discuss comic books with? It's called the perfect match game. Okay. I'm getting the sense that Jimmy's a little nervous. What this boils down to is you're gonna look at your sheet. If you see somebody that you liked, 
who liked you back. That is a perfect match. Ladies, I need you to really quickly look out in the crowd, find somebody you were a perfect match with, get to them as fast as you can. Go, this is a competition, run. Quick. Uh-oh, Jimmy. Uh-oh. Are you going to have to stand at the wall of shame with the other rejects, Jimmy? I'm all alone. Oh, somebody please clip that. Please, please clip that. I think he realized. I think reality crushed him a little bit here. I'm all alone. So Jimmy might have been a little too picky. No perfect matches. How did nobody like Jimmy? What the hell is that? <laughs> the fucking Gabe is such a dick. He's got a microphone. He has a microphone. Did you see that? How <laughs> He's saying this to a room full of people as this guy walks by and nobody wants him. Nobody like Jimmy. What the hell is that? How did nobody fuck this nerd? Everybody look at Jimmy. Jimmy's alone. Everybody turn your head and look at Jimmy as he walks out of here crying. Oh, how did nobody want him? I had a lot of names. <laughs> I actually don't see either of the two girls that I wrote down on, on my sheet, so. I got a lot of names. I got a lot of names. Jimmy's got a lot working for him, and he knows what he wants. I think he's got a good shot. If he wants to call the girls that left him his stuff, I'm wishing him luck. The whole experience, it was fun. Beyond Comic-Con, my plans for love, you know, just let that be spontaneous. You know, if something works out and I find something, you know, that's great, but we'll see. The speed dating at Comic-Con, I've never been in a situation where I've gotten to talk with. Okay, see, this is a, uh, this is a dude that's letting the fandom fuck him up. All right, he's in shape. He doesn't have any deformities. He's got a fucking defined jawline. This is a normal looking guy that shouldn't have any issue getting a girlfriend. It's the geeky shit he's into that's holding him back. If he went and met a woman and didn't introduce himself as Jimmy Olsen or talk about Superman for three hours, he could get a pretty decent looking chick. And interact and flirt with as many girls as I, as I did in the speed dating session. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, I guess I just didn't feel any love connections. But, you know, I would really enjoy to be, to have somebody in my life that I could take out and be. I see people in chat saying, well, he's a manlet. Well, that's why you buy a stepladder, Jimmy. You meet a girl that's taller than you, you get on your stepladder. And you do a cute little leprechaun voice and you win her over. Romantic with, because at my core, I feel like I'm a romantic. I need something to come along and just electrify me and, you know, knock me on the ground and make me feel like, wow, this is something that, that needs to be worked into my life. I need this because if I if I can't have that, then you know, then I don't know. Oh, I'm becoming addicted to the show, chat. Watch a few more episodes, I think. Let's uh, let's. What are we on? Number four here. Let's see what else we got. I'll read a few of the super chats that came through in a minute here. All right, let's see what do we have. Uh, episode number three. I have to retitle this Geek Love. I was going to do cuck documentaries, but we've gone off onto something entirely new. Uh, there's no, we're not watching. There's no way. This chick looks normal. There's no fucking way Brittany's having trouble getting a date at Comic-Con. Fuck Brittany. We'll take a look at that later, but fuck Brittany. There's no reason she should be on this show. <laughs> okay, maybe this one, though. This one looks like she might have a touch of the crazy. All right, let's set that one up. Let me read a few of the Super Chats here, and then we will jump back into another episode of one of the most amazing TV shows that's ever been produced. All right, from Mr. Curie, if I got to one of these, I'm giving them the suicide hotline from Syrian, uh, Russian speak, which I can't speak because I'm an American, and I'm not part of any investigation, all right? All right, stop it. I'm not turning over evidence. Trump is innocent. Fuck you. You're not going to trick me. I know what's going on. From Arcade Outpost, 
My cat is really sick and I couldn't afford to hospitalize him, so they sold me the mats to do it myself at home. Press P to pray that I am better at playing vet than I am at playing Castlevania. Or Castlevania. Uh, chat, can we get a, uh, a P for prayer for Arcade Outpost Cat? This cat's sick and he's trying to take care of it at home. Uh, best of luck. I know what it's like to have a sick pet. Rough. Hopefully uh, things work out for you. And let's get a P in chat for our boy Arcade Outpost Cat. From Thuffman15. Damn, that's some stinky potato salad, JF. Shouldn't have let the retarded girl make it for the cooking show. From Caleb LL Show. Oh, right. One last thing. Last night, Godspeed Live did a review of a show called Life Goes On. That's Corky, isn't it? That's the 80s show with Corky, the Down Syndrome dude. Where a guy, oh yeah, where a guy with Down Syndrome burned down a restaurant and joined a gang. Also, this trans gamer named Cyberdemon531 was talking mad shit at you. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Is that, is that somebody on the platform? Maybe I'll look at that later on. Uh, Mr. Curie, my lungs, why do you do this? Guns down and hail. Jim, can we get a fat Gabe Jedi emote, please? Thanks, Jim. If somebody wants to make me a fat Gabe Jedi emote, I will put it on. We will make it an emote for the fucking chat. Uh, I'm terrible at making emotes, so if you can make me one that's easily visible and we know it's our boy Gabe, I will, I will totally make that a fucking emote. Okay, we're caught up. One of the nice things about streaming, I make no money over here, so Super Berry chats are really quick. All right, we're going to go with episode number two of Geek Love Faux Real. Beauty is the Geek, starring Casey Ann, apparently. Uh, I was going to go with episode number three, but there's no... Now, fuck Brittany. All right, I, I got to look at her. Looks a little too normal to be having trouble on a speed dating show. <laughs> I don't know why she showed up. All right, here we go. Wait, did I get that? Yeah, okay. Single? Yes. Guys or girls? Both. Casey is wearing very little. I really want to find love where somebody loves me just as much as I love them. I'm actually really excited to see. Well, Casey, let's let's take a look at what might the what might the problem be with your quest for love. Now you got big tits. That's a plus, Casey. And you got a you got a good face. You you clean. You look like you don't smell. Big tits. That's good. Maybe this, Casey. Maybe this area of your body might be what's putting people off. Maybe. And this, ladies, is a tip. Guys, too, if you ever do this. Um, if you have a stomach that looks like this, don't wear a midriff exposing outfit. Gacy? Because, you know, when a guy's looking, he's like, hey, she's got a cute face. Oh, nice tits. What the fuck is that? Why is Casey, why does Casey have a tire of fat around her stomach? And it moves? Look at that belly button. Imagine the smell that emanates from that belly button. That's a thought I don't want to think about when I'm sitting across from you, Casey. Cover that up. Just cover that up. Put a sweater on, Casey. Do something. I'm actually really excited to see the reaction we get from the guys here at Speed Dating over her. I think they're going to go for it. I don't know if there's anybody that I really have connected with. Anywhere you want. Real live women waiting to talk to you. Kermit the Frog here. Welcome to Geek Love. Yay! I love geeks. I would like to find some geek love. That would be nice. Somewhere you will find someone who shares the same things that you do. I don't think it's hard for geeks and nerds to find love. I think it's hard for geeks and nerds to find places to meet to fall in love. Over 18? Yes. Single? Yes. Guys or girls? Both. Single? Yes. Guys or girls? Okay. Over 18? Yes. Single? Yes. Guys or girls? Uh, this is a typical female tactic, by the way. I've noticed this. See, what you have here is how women put themselves out as real. On the, <laughs> they put themselves out uh, when looking for love. Here you have a chick that's skinny and in a, uh, you know, she looks cute, got her outfit on, and she places herself between two ham beasts. So any guy that walks by will think she's extra skinny. See, she's made herself look even smaller, more petite, more in shape by sandwiching herself between this and this. This is a classic woman tactic. Girls. I like guys. You like guys. I like girls 
to, but not enough to date a girl. Girls are nice. <laughs> a geek, particularly a game geek, since I was about two years old. My name is Casey Ann. I'm 22 years old. See, that's much better, Casey. I can't, I can't see, I can't see that midriff. See, this is so much better, Casey. We should have worn something like this. Years old and I'm pretty geeky. <laughs> right now, I'm playing Lollipop Chainsaw. I used to be babysat by my grandmother, and she had a NES, and I used to attempt to play The Legend of Zelda. So <laughs> I started gaming back then, and I just kind of never stopped. <laughs> Pauldrons. They're pretty uh, fantastic when you're trying to walk indoors. Being a geek makes it tough to find a good guy because a lot of geeky guys are either intimidated by me or they want me to prove I'm a geek so that makes it kind of tough to find somebody okay but in their defense you are wearing you know your room is basic bitch gamer girl material all right basic bitch gamer girl material <laughs> usually centers around nothing but Legend of Zelda 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 there's some Zelda over there there's a lot of Zelda all right, that usually sends up the basic bitch gamer girl motif that we've got going. All right, just to be fair to those dudes that you say, ask them, uh, ask you to prove yourself to them. You got the chainsaw? Yes, <laughs> I do. Thank you. And the boyfriend. <laughs> I kind of don't really date so much. I have found love before, but it wasn't reciprocated, so... At this point, I really want to find love where somebody loves me just as much as I love them. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, of course the gamer girl liked the game, Catherine, about men that are basically sheep being preyed upon by a succubus. Yeah, no, I get that she would like that video game. No, chat, that's not a surprise. Even more. <laughs> This guy, you know what? I don't. I. I. I'm gonna tell you. I don't think he even likes geek shit. I bet this dude doesn't play video games, doesn't like anime, doesn't like comic books. He just knows that he's got a good physique, so he wants to go somewhere where there are a bunch of nerds and take his shirt off and fuck with everybody. He wants all the. <laughs> he wants to fuck with nerds. That's what he lives for. This guy goes to conventions to walk around like a stripper, just to fuck with nerds. I think one of the big reasons sci-fi speed dating is becoming so successful is people are starting to realize that it's not a joke. I mean, every con now, we consistently turn away hundreds, if not thousands of people. I am nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. <laughs> Okay, now, the dates are three minutes long. Every three minutes, the guys will stand up and cycle on to the next date. You will have a scorecard on your chairs with a pen. Use it to keep track. Yeah, this is really not a flattering cosplay for her. Okay, when when we saw her at home, she looked, she looked decent, right? She looked like a normal chick. But this outfit just is horrendous on her. This Everything about this makes her look worse. Why would she do this? Scorecard on your chairs with a pen. Use it to keep track of the people you like. It's hard to say what the person sitting across from me at speed dating will see as my best quality, especially because I'm going to be in costume. Hopefully it's not, like... You see what I mean? It's like two different people. It's the costume makes her look even fatter. I thought women are supposed to be really good about this, like they understand how to make themselves look better, but she's done the opposite of that. She's gone the complete opposite direction. She's making herself look worse my cleavage or something awkward like that. I would sit like this. <laughs> so. Gentlemen, if you're here just to get laid, please leave. Ladies, if you're here just to get laid, take your pick. I think Casey Ann as a geek has the reverse of the ugly duckling syndrome. 
she's kind of a babe. I'm actually really excited to see the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did he just agree with me? I said that she looks better normally, but when she cosplays, she looks like shit. And he said... He said she has the reverse of the ugly duckling. That instead of being, you know, ugly to start with... Uh, yeah, she, she starts off normal and turns ugly. Reaction we get from the guys here at Speed Dating over her. I think they're going to go for it. I, I think they're going to make a valiant effort at dating her. Speed dating begins in a three, two, speed date, anywhere you want. Uh, no, Chad, I'm not, I'm not Chad Newell here. Uh, if I was this dude, this show would be every year. I'd be running this shit at every convention and putting it up myself on YouTube. And I'd probably be making 50 grand on Patreon from that genius idea. This man needs to make this a fucking series. Real live women waiting to talk to you. Hey. Um, so what do you do? Is that too personal? Oh, no, I just mean in regards to what? Oh. She is so wet right now. Her brain stopped working. Did you catch that? A semi-decent guy sat down across from her and spoke, and she got so horny she couldn't even think. She's thinking about him inside of her. She's gone completely off the reservation. Her brain has clocked out, and her vagina is doing all the thinking. In regards to what? <laughs> oh, professionally. I'm a lawyer. Oh, 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 things are going badly now, aren't they, honey? Oh, the, the decent-looking guy's a lawyer? He probably drives a convertible? <laughs> She's, they're going to need a mop after she gets off this seat. So, I like your outfit. Very nice. I love it, too. <laughs> Casey is dressed as lollipop chainsaw, but she's wearing very little and... Hopefully, she will reveal a lot of herself. This dude, look at that face. He fucking knows. He gets it. Our boy gets it. He totally understands what we're talking about watching this. He understands. That's why he keeps dropping, you know, talking about ugly, reverse ugly duckling, revealing a lot about herself. He fucking totally gets it. I'm not even going to talk to you, fatty. I'm just going to look at you, lady. Look at you and your gunt. I'm just going to sit. Look at your muffin top. I don't talk to dogs. I throw treats at them. Why don't you get up and fetch, bitch? I don't talk to your kind. What would you say is your favorite game? Legend of Zelda. Yay, me too. <laughs> so far, it's been fun. Nobody has asked me yet if I've actually played this video game, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Zombie lollipop chainsaw. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> did you play that? Of course I did. <laughs> I've been meeting some nice people. I don't know if there's anybody that I really have connected with or anything, though. So I don't know who I would pick. She looks so lost. She looks so fucking conf I actually feel bad for this woman. I felt bad for a few of the guys. She feels like just a little normal geek girl that is so desperate to find a dude. But where's the most unappealing cosplays? And that's what... She's kind of like Jimmy Olsen. If she just dressed normally, she'd be fine. But she puts the most horrendous outfits on, and it kills her. Do you know who I am? If I was going to guess, I would say you're Mortal Kombat. Yes, good job. I'm new to fun. And uh, you're a lollipop chainsaw, right? Yeah. Do you have the head? I do, yeah. They made me the old boyfriend behind if I was going to start going on dates. You know what? Yeah. You bad <laughs> so, KCM speed dated the guy who was very physically fit, you know, very pumped, iron looking, good looking guy, chiseled chin, very superhero, the Schwarzenegger style, you know. And um, he seemed like he was completely unfazed by her looks. His eyes. Holy fucking shit, Gabe. Did you, did you catch that? Oh, this mother... Somebody get this bitch some cream for these burns. Oh! He seemed like he was completely unfazed by her looks. His eyes were always looking at eyes. He was never... So your preferable games are cheerleader zombie games? Well, 
My true love as far as video games is actually Zelda. So. Ah, so you're a big Zelda fan too. So I haven't played any of like the new ones on the new world, like the Wii system. Do you not have a Wii? I do not have a Wii. Right? Let's not talk about my lack of a Wii. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure meeting you, 22. Nice to meet you. 22, and you were 24. I'm wondering if I should just take a chance and write something down, or not, because I'm afraid. So unless I know that I'm super sure, I'm just hesitant. All right, ladies, go to that table. Gentlemen, you will stand up and go to that table. Hopefully, you've been keeping track of the people you liked on your scorecards. Of the people that you liked, you will write the number on your chest, your first name, and either your cell phone or your email address. Nothing else. The perfect match is just a chance to get three more minutes with somebody that you liked, that liked you back. I think the perfect match is kind of a huge moment because, like, you might actually be seeing the start of a forever relationship. OK, ladies. Oh boy, we, somebody get a hold of Danny. We found a place for him to get some forever friends. Quick and grab the papers that are yours. If you're 11, you grab 11. I hope you all have your perfect match in sight. You need to run to him as fast as possible right now. Go. Hi. Do you still want to talk and yeah. hang out? You tell me about your archaeology. She's playing the odds right now. Let me let me give you some some uh, real facts, some real world facts about dating when it comes to racial differences. Black dudes, you know, mixed black dudes, brown dudes, the fuck fat white girls. She knows this. That's why she went to sit down there. She's like, who in this room full of people will fuck me? The black dude. That's why she went for that. Now watch him reject her, and we can all laugh as she sits against the wall of shame. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do, ideally, but I know that that's kind of difficult to break into. But, like, are you studying into that right now? Yep, I'm studying um, history, and then I'm going to take archaeology-specific courses before I graduate. I like that, like, you're studying archaeology. Like, I wouldn't suspect that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they caught me off guard. I'm going to go to the costume contest tonight? Yeah, I'll join you, because okay. I was going to do that, too. Oh, 6.30, right? Yeah. Tonight for... Oh, God, please. Please, God in heaven, listen to me. Let her show up at this event, and he's not there. And let the film crew catch the entire thing. I want to see her heart get shattered for our amusement. He tells her, I'll meet you at 6.30 at this event. It's going to be so much funnier if he isn't there. It's going to be so much better if he does not show up. Our date, we're going to go to the costume contest. It definitely seems like it could be a good fit, and I'm hoping that it goes well tonight. <laughs> I love your life. <laughs> Thank you so much. How's everything? Good. Good to see you again. Yeah, good. He's so ashamed he's wearing a mask. I can't be seen in public with this one. My, my friends will never let me hear the end of it. See you too. When I dress up, I'm doing a little cool stuff for them. Yeah. I love it. It makes them smile. I love when it's somebody's favorite character. Okay. I, I have to... I don't understand what's happening here. That dude, normal looking, and he's in shape. Why is he lowering his standards? What is happening right now? ...character or something, and it just yeah. makes them so happy. Oh, yeah. I love it. You did really good on this. Like, you made all this? Yeah. That's really crazy. Like, I need to get on your level. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am so off that. Oh, he's putting her through the ropes. I got to make sure Fatty can move. Let's bring her to a dance dance machine. And let's see if she gets too sweaty and has a heart attack from this. Look, look at her face. This is too strenuous. This is too much exercise. Can we play Zelda instead? We played Just Dance. Um, he actually managed to get me on the stage dancing, which is a pretty difficult feat because I am the best dancer ever, as I'm sure it was obvious to everyone in that room. My first date was actually pretty cool. Like, I wasn't suspecting it to be like this, but it was really nice. I, I like her so much. Like, I would like to, like, maybe see if we could go on another one. 
No, I think you did great. It was just, you know, have you ever played that before? No. Okay, then, you did awesome. I see chat is split. I'm seeing two answers being given. Some Half of you seem to think that he wants a green card. The other half thinks that he likes extra cushion for the pushing. I haven't been on too many dates ever, but this, if it's a first date, has been a really fun one. We, we danced, we did costuming stuff, so super nerdy and just about everything that I like. <laughs> Um, so after speed dating, Alex and I did keep in touch through Facebook. He has actually gone on to, um, find someone though. He's in a... Oh, ho, 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 ho. rejected. Oh, welcome to... ...relationship and not with me. And that's okay. And I'm super happy for him. And I honestly have no doubt that I'll find someone. I'm definitely more open to dating now and I've kind of let go of the idea that a date is necessarily an indicator that you're going to be in a relationship. Like, dating can just be fun. I did fall in love at Comic-Con with Comic-Con. <laughs> so, I... Yeah, this is another one. This is just like Jimmy. Normal looking person could find herself a boyfriend easily. It's that cosplay outfit made her look horrendous. Made her look just awful. Just be, just wear normal shit. Wear normal shit and go talk to a guy. You'll be just fine, honey. <laughs> but she still got cucked. We'll be back next year, and who knows? Maybe I will do speed dating again. We'll see what the future holds. <laughs> oh, this show is fucking brutal. I love how they film the little updates. They just they want to make sure that people are aware that these people are lonely. It's like they feed on it. Like they're just extra sure that they're... F oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, uh, we should have watched the first one first. I think I made a mistake. The very first episode is called Brony Friend Zone Alex. Oh. Brony Friend Zone. Oof. Oh, how could we have skipped that one? How could we have skipped the best episode? Oh, that's the one we need to watch first. Oh, well, I guess we saved the best for last. All right, let me, let me check and make sure I didn't miss any super berries before we jump back into this shit. From Reno Mills. The black dude is lowering his standards because of his dark past of domestic violence. From Rebar. Jim, are you aware of the Patrice O'Neill's 30-point hotness scale? Best system to convey attractiveness. You know, I listened to Patrice a lot when he was on ONA, but I don't think I've heard of his uh, point scale. You don't have to do another super chat, but link it or post about it in the chat, and we'll take a look at it later. Because Patrice is pretty on the fucking money when it came to thoughts. Uh, from Justice Moderator, Jim, your ability to play the role of commentator during these streams is similar to Joe Rogan during UFC bouts. Thanks for making Mondays great again. Oh, and Sargon of a God. Uh, he made me a fat uh, gay emote. Uh, thank you very much there, Sargon. <laughs> we'll make sure to take a look. All right, we are we are caught up. Uh, you know what? I, I need another drink. I need another drink for this amazing episode of Geek Love. Brony Friend Zone. Oof. Alex, I have a bad feeling about what's coming up for you, buddy. Put a little music on real quick. Go get a drink. Take a piss break if you need to. Uh, watchers. And uh, we'll pick up in one to two minutes here. Uh, one to two minutes, I'll be right back.
Okay, we are back. We are back with the next episode of this amazing dating show that we've been watching from IGN called Geek Love. And we have finally, we've got, we've worked our way backwards from the last to the first. We're now at the first episode of Geek Love, Brony Friend Zone, starring Alex, which just the title alone makes me, makes me think I know how this one's going to turn out. Now we've watched quite a few people all endure heartbreak and be forced to stand up against the wall of shame by the based Jedi Gabe, whose sole goal in life is to make them commit suicide, apparently, because that's what this show is set up to do. Let's find out what happens to our brony friend, who I think we probably saw in a... a God, we saw him, I'm almost 100% certain already, but we'll, we'll see how this plays out, Jet. Comic-Con is the perfect place to find your geek soulmate. This is Pinkie Pie. She likes to party. Oh, my God. Are you a brony? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, my God. The girls that I really do like just want to be friends. I'm kind of, like, nervous sitting around you right now. What comics are you reading? I have a... Yeah, he's got a great... He, oh, fuck. All right. Let's get a look at him. Let's get a look at this. All right. Well, first off, I don't know what... What kind of beard am I... What, what is this? There's having a neck beard, and then there's whatever this uh, atrocity he's got growing on his face is. <laughs> it's, I, this is the worst beard I've ever seen. And it's red. It's bad enough on its own, but it's red as well. What in the fuck were you thinking? What in the fuck made you think this looked good? I'm kind of like nervous sitting around you right now. What comics are you reading? I have a lady boner for Winter Soldiers. Wait, chat, are you saying that dude was so in love with food that the only style of sideburns he wanted were mutton chops because it reminded him of the thing that he eats? That's pretty harsh. That's, that's pretty mean for the fat dude. Welcome to our universe. When you're at Comic-Con, the people in this world are different, and it shows. Nerds Have you noticed, too, at the start of every episode, they do like a, a panning shot where they get people to say shit like, nerds rule and geeks are great, but every one of them is a couple? It's like, they, it's like the people at IGN really, really, really wanted to drive home the point that the people they're highlighting are the saddest fucks on planet Earth. So they always show you couples at the start. Like, hey, hey, look at these people that are in love and happy. You're never going to have that. Instead, you're going to stand against the wall of shame. I think it's really important for geeks and nerds to be able to find love just like it's important for everybody else. Geeks are sexy because they're just sexy. This is 18 and over, so I can say it, because they can put a lot of imagination into the bedroom. That woman's never had sex in her life. They can, they can put a lot, of, a lot of imagination into the bedroom. This woman has, she is, she has burnt out more batteries in her vibrator than Radio Shack has in stock. Okay? This woman has never touched a penis. They have imagination the bed. No, they don't. No. Because they can put a lot of imagination into the bedroom. Three, two, one. On to the next date. Sci-fi speed dating at Comic-Con is the perfect place to find your geek soulmate. Over 18? I'm 13. You're 13? Yes. Inches. It's a gr no. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, Gabe just fucks with them. I, I, don't give me your geek jokes, nerd. I'm the fucking Jedi Master. You gonna try humor with me? I'm gonna make you an example. Oh, you fucked up, Alex. You fucked up big time. You tried taking Gabe's shtick and you tried fucking with it. This guy is gonna make you an example for that room. Uh, maybe around, yeah. Okay, yeah. looking for guys or girls? Oh, girls, definitely. Okay. Hi, I'm Alex, I am 25, and I am a giant geek. All the art I usually get at Comic-Con, it's all up on the walls here. Every kind of trip to Comic-Con, I usually get a lot of po art. My love life status is a mix of forever alone and socially awkward penguin. 
Oh, this is going to be a rough one. I hope you guys have liquor. This <laughs> why would you be for Alex? Alex, maybe a uh, God. I, I mean, you're fat. We get it. You can lose the weight. But I think the more immediate solution to the problems you're facing in life is shave this abomination off of your fucking face. What the fuck is this? It's meme-tastic. You know, characters that I love, you know, Rose Red from Fables, because she's a redhead. I love redheads. Big fan of them. One of my favorites is uh, this piece here. Just all redheads. <laughs> I'm a renaissance geek. I like comics. I like board games. I love Doctor Who. And uh, I'm also a brony. Uh, so let's let's go off the checklist. Uh, obese, has glasses, world's worst neck beard, a redhead, lives in a room full of women he'll never fuck, loves Reddit, and he's a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> I don't see why he's having issues. Oh, and he's a brony. Fuck, how could we forget that? So what a brony is is someone who watches My Little Pony. Okay, this is uh, Pinkie Pie. She likes to party. So uh... there needs to be a show like um, Intervention or Hoarders for dating lives of geeks. All right, we need to get like a Chad, somebody that can really get women, who comes into their life. And the first thing that he does is he goes in their room and he rips all the shit off the wall and he takes his stupid fucking ponies, drags them into the front yard and burns them. You know, like in Hoarders where they drag their shit out? That's the first step in this Dating Life of Geek show that we're going to have hosted by a chat. That's the first step to recovery, Alex. We need to get rid of your My Little Pony shit. This is Applejack here. Uh, she's She owns a farm in the show, and uh, I like her. She's sort of the no-nonsense, hardworking one. Every Thursday, I go to board game night in Brooklyn. Yes, chat. Sam Hyde would be perfect for that show. You know that skit he did? <laughs> where he got the cripple guy. We need that, but more serious. Where Sam actually goes to their fucking homes and burns their shit in the lawn, shaves this asshole's face, makes him dress normally, and starts making him lose weight. All right, you give Sam Hyde a couple of months, and this dude's going to be slaying pussy. Board games, ho. You're going to all see that you have a certain amount of quarters and uh, tubes that are required. Yeah. So take those amount. My favorite thing about board games is how it, it can bring people together. What kind of girl do you want to meet when you go to con? Like, uh, I mean, there's many types of nerds. So someone, like, yeah. What, what um, type of nerd would you say? No, seriously. Okay. Seriously, though. Like okay. This is... I feel bad right now. Okay, she's cute. This chick is... I don't know why she's here. There's got to be something going on in the, their home life. I don't understand why she is here. But I like, <laughs> I like that the show producers had to make it clear... That this, this attractive woman, just friends. Don't get confused, Alex. Just friends. The show has made it forever. I bet you he wants to fuck her so bad. I bet he wants to fuck her so bad it hurts. But now it's it's a memorialized for eternity. You've been friend-zoned by IGN, Alex. Like, What type of girl would you optimally like to meet there? Yeah, I guess you, but not crazy and hyper. So you assess... Oh! Oh my god, that was not subtle at all, Alex. So what kind of girl would you like to date? You. Alex wants you. I actually want my non-evil twin. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. That's a little creepy, Alex. <laughs> Some of my challenges with girls are just the girls that I really do like, that I'm really interested in. I just want to be friends. What kind of questions are you going to ask? Who's your favorite pony? <laughs> oh my god, are you a brony? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, my oh god, Alex, look, she has great teeth, too. Oh, she's skinny, perfect skin, nice teeth, dressed well, and she has no interest in you, Alex. The show told you, just friends. Oh, Alex, who do you want to date? You! Not interested, Alex. And now she's laughing at your fucking ponies. Oh, the girl that you want to deep dick so bad is laughing at your fucking ponies, Alex. I wonder if her boyfriend shows up occasionally. You think he just shows up to rub it in Alex's face? You think he, like, walks in there and he's like, Hey, nerds, you enjoying your gay fucking card shit? Hey, baby, come over here and grab my dick. I want Alex to watch this. Oh my God. You know that's up there with MMOers, right? 
No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I'm referencing. So, okay, I'm gonna pretend I'm sitting here and I'm cosplaying as Neil Gaiman's death, okay? <laughs> so you would come up to me. Some of my challenges with girls are just talking to some of them. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm Carolyn. Nice to meet you, Carolyn. Nice to meet you, too. So, I, I guess you're into Neil Gaiman, but the, uh, I do, I yeah. like him a lot. I really like all of his comics. What kind of comics do you like? Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of comics. What else are you into? Oh my god, Alex, look at her face! You know her, and you're fucking this conversation up. She's letting you roleplay with her, which is the closest you're ever gonna get to maybe dating her. Look at her friend. Her friend is literally laughing so hard at you. She can't even look at you, Alex. You've got this chick, and she says, what kind of comics are you into? And you actually answer, I like uh, comics are good. I like, I like, like comic. Comic are good. Oh my god. Holy shit, this is brutal. I like ponies. That's cool. I like my little pony, too. <laughs> That'd be perfect, wouldn't it? Hopefully, you know, I meet someone there that I really do like, that I'm really interested in. You know, hopefully it's not some half-hearted thing, you know, that's like, oh no, I really do like her. Hopefully she likes me too. Because then it's just, there's no point. You don't want to, that's called stalking then. Don't do it. Oh, what? Why do I get the feeling that, that oh, Alex, you're speaking from experience, champ. Listen to this. Because then it's just, there's no point. You don't want to, that's called stalking then. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Oh, <laughs> he's remembering this. Alex is speaking from experience. What's great about geek love is you could be yourself. Yo, send them. I think it's really important for geeks and nerds to be able to find love just like it's important for everybody else. Nobody really wants to be alone. Here come the potential men. What I hope comes out of this is a date. Any date, I think any date maybe. Guys, leave all your bags and stuff over there by that table, under the table. I definitely uh, like someone who has red hair, a unique face, you know, someone who doesn't look like everyone else maybe. Move on in, okay guys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sci-Fi Speed Dating. Okay, what is he dressed as? Is this, is this like an obese Ash Ketchum or something? What is this? Chat, what, what is his cosplay? I wasn't really paying attention. The beard just transfixed me. I couldn't, I couldn't pay attention to the rest. <laughs> we'll figure it out, I guess. Ladies, do not use this as an exercise to perfect your friend zoning technique. <laughs> the friend zone sucks. And escaping the friend zone is like threading a needle while jumping on a pogo stick, evading sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their frickin' heads. Dates are three minutes long. Every three minutes, get up and row. A lot of people saying Gravity Falls. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm out of the loop on this one, I guess. Rotate. Ladies, please have a seat. It would be great if I could find the perfect match. Someone I like, someone who likes me, maybe. But I'm, I'm open to see what's going to happen. All right, three, two, speed date. So, uh, how long have you been? So, have you enjoyed Comic-Con so far? Oh, super smooth, Alex. <laughs> this is oh you know the fucking image macro from v where it's the dude that always answers you too to everything like the inappropriate conversation he's so socially awkward he can't fucking get anything out like somebody could walk up and say how's the weather today and they're like you too that's what <laughs> that's alex that's what alex is doing he can't even say how are you doing i tell how how are you doing what? How are you enjoying Comic Con so far? Like it. It's tough at first, you know. It's like. <laughs> Hi. So I'm wearing a Russian shirt, so I'm kind of like nervous sitting around you right now. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna die. Don't worry. I hope you don't either. Yeah, no, I hope not. Alex is. Yeah. Wait. Hey, that's a. <laughs> the first thing she thinks of, the first thing that comes to her mind when she sits next to him is death. Alex, you're giving off the wrong vibe here, man. <laughs> oh god is a very classical styled geek he knows what he is and he's proud of it so what are you into like, i'm into everything nice yeah. comic video games uh, board games i will play board games cool <laughs> i'm loosening up you know it's like i'm just sort of trying to take it as i go I 
health education field. Okay. Health ed teacher, putting condoms on bananas, things like that. It's always fun. It always, you know, shocks people when you pull the I bet it shocks her that he knows what a condom is because he's never had sex and never will have sex. That's probably the thought going through her head. Why are you talking to me about condoms? Look at your beard. You're never going to use one, Alex. Get away from me. What's the weirdest museum you've been to? The sex museum. Her fandom doesn't have to match mine, but it, you know, it wouldn't hurt if we matched a little bit. I love the Kirby shirt. Thank you. Nothing like a little innocent, dirty humor. Yeah. <laughs> I like that she had a, uh, you know... Is he hunching over? <laughs> what is he doing? Are you trying to do your best Quasimodo cosplay, Alex? Why are you hunched over like this? His neck has disappeared. His head is sinking into his shoulders. Alex, what are you doing? I like that she had a, uh, you know... You know, sexually funny Kirby shirt on, uh, but I want you inside me. Uh, video games? Yeah, have you played Journey on PS3? I love it. Oh Journey's my gosh. Awesome. Cool, I someone love else. It. So he seemed really interested in what I do, um, and, and he was really nice. It was very fun talking with her, you know. I felt very comfortable with her. The bells! The bells! Esmeralda, the bells! Oh, it was really nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Hi. Yeah, she was cute. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Idris. What comics are you reading? I have a lady boner for Winter Soldiers. Is it the way Anna Garm does it, or? No, 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 no. His, his ass polery attitude. Okay. <laughs> the bad boy attitude. Got yes. it. That's sort of a. That's like catnip for women, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's going great. Uh, you know, so far some of the girls are great. So what are you into? Batman. Batman Batman is my all-time favorite of the characters. Great costume, though. How long did it take you? you? He was a huge fan of Batman and Harley. Oh, that's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a Freudian slip, honey. <laughs> what word pops into her mind first? Huge. Huge. Big. Girthy. So that always gets me going. Quiet, please, and sit down. Yes, there's three minutes. I know you're not used to going that long, but it's okay. <laughs> You've been keeping track of the people you liked on your scorecards, yes? When I'm done talking, you're going to find the pieces of paper that correlate to the people that you liked. If you liked number five, you'll find number five's page. It'll say number five on it. If you didn't like somebody, don't write anything down. Okay, fair warning. Some of you are going to get no numbers. It happens. I apologize. And I'm looking at you, Alex. Everybody, turn your heads towards Alex. He's my example. Some of you people aren't going to get any, any dates. Nobody's going to want to see you naked. Especially you, Alex. Especially you. Advance just means it wasn't a session for you. All right, write your stuff down. Go. Uh, it's really hard to pick. I like so many of them. I like the girl with the uh, Kirby shirt. I like the girl in the uh, Star Trek uniform. I also like the one that was dressed up as Harley. Who knows, though? The ones I like are the ones that everyone likes, of course. So I'm going to go put my no name and number down and see what happens. Gentlemen, sit still, look pretty, puff out your chest. All right, ladies, this is what we call the perfect match. This is a chance for you guys and gals to get three minutes with somebody that liked you, that you liked back, okay? It's hard to know if I've left an impression on the ones that I'd like, you know, it's sort of, so it's a tough thing. Ladies, do you have your perfect match in sight? Yes. Okay, track in on their hormonal signals. You need to run to him as fast as possible right now, go. Okay, it's time to play the guessing game, chat. How many beautiful women, how many beautiful women are going to sit in front of Alex? Take, take your guess. Give me a number. How many gorgeous, attractive women are going to sit across from the brony-loving Redditor with the world's worst neckbeard? <laughs> chat does not have a lot of faith. Oh, you're all going to feel terrible. You're going to feel terrible when the hottest girl in the room sits across from him. Maybe Jimmy Olsen will come over. Ask him to be his fat Superman. If you do not have a perfect match, it's okay. Quickly, quickly. Hey, I'm actually Alex. Unbelievable. How do you feel, chat? You've been blown the fuck out. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's right. That's right. 
Alex is the pussy slayer. What? What now, chat? What now? So I probably, Hi, you know, that's me, Kate. I was actually surprised it was, you know, someone who I actually liked. So she had red hair, which is cool. You guys beat the odds. You had a perfect match. Congratulations. That's really something cool in this thing right here. Take this time, talk to these people, maybe set up some time to hang out this weekend. How old are you as well? I'm, I'm 25. 24. 25, nice, good. There's like one 32 year old that still lives with his mom. I was like, no. no. Oh, don't do it, Alex. Don't say you live with your mother. Do not, under any circumstances, follow up what she just said with, I still live with my mom. Don't fucking do it. I kind of live with my folks still. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing, you stupid fucking idiot? Why would you do that? Why would you do that, Alex? Yeah, you but it, I don't know. I feel like, like in the 20s, it's okay. Because yeah, no. especially the economy sucks. So, uh... You want to meet up sometime after this? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, but I've got a little bit of time right now if you want to yeah, keep we chatting. Could, I could, we could walk around, uh, you know. Yeah. Got, I can walk you back to your booth as well. If you need okay. To ask. <laughs> cool. Thanks. I mean, it's like, you can do it yourself, of course. But you, but... <laughs> oh, he is so lost. He does not know what to do. This is going to be fun watching this tr fucking tire fire. <laughs> you know, if you want, yeah. you can go out in the company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you sure? I don't know. I, I'm hopeful. I like her. And, I, you know, she kind of picked me, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, women find, uh, just a pro tip for the dudes in chat right now, uh, women uh, are super turned on by uh, chat, make sure you pay attention. They love it when you have the pastiest, whitest skin on earth, and you wear rainbow colored socks. Anything that draws attention to your Casper looking skin, women just get wet over that. It's a pro tip, a dating tip from Alex. Okay. So, yeah. Is this his ghost? Look at how pale he is. Has he left his body and we're speaking with his spirit now? Yeah. What happened after speed dating was that after talking to Kate, basically on camera, uh, cameras were off, and we walked away, and what happened was that basically uh, she told me after about a minute, Basically, that she just wanted to be friends. So basically, holy shit, the girl used him. Oh, that's so mean. And she told him to his face. As soon as the as soon as the cameras turned off, she said that I was a fucking goblin and that she would never touch my penis. Kind of uh, nothing ever happened, of course. I understand. at this email here. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of Fs in chat. Uh, the chat window froze up for like 30 seconds. For some reason, Streamy has issues where it'll the audio will cut out or the, free, or the stream will just completely fucking freeze up for no reason at all. I, I Hopefully on the archive version that is fixed, but... I, there's nothing I can do about it. I know they've talked about fixing their servers and fixing their issues, but it's just something that happens on the site. Okay. Bye. Well, there you go, chat. We have we watched basically the whole thing. We watched every episode, almost, of Geek Love. Uh, fuck Brittany, we're not watching her episode. So every, every, basically every episode worth watching, we have watched. Not exactly the show that I thought we'd be doing today, but good stuff, good recommendation. Uh, just amazing. I'll take that chat emote for Gabe and submit it, so hopefully it goes through by tomorrow. We'll do another stream uh, tomorrow, probably around 7 or 8. I tried really early morning ones. I'm going to try a little later in the morning and see if I like them better. And we'll just kind of see how it goes from there. Uh, let me check and see if there are any super chats left. I'll read those off real quick before 
wrapping it up. Oh, one second here. From Squid the Kid, every time I think I'm a Supersberg, I see some shit like this and realize I'm doing all right. Thanks, Jimbo. That's what this show exists for, is to make sure you feel like everything's good. From Reno Mills, or Miles, this message goes out to the Sweetie Squad, all you dense motherfuckers who actually go to Comic-Con and don't know why the super hot girl is all over you. It's because she has HSV too. So wrap it up. From Aesthetic Board, this guy wants a furry religion. I will, I'll save that one for tomorrow's show. From King of Arizona, Legit Jim, how much pussy do you think Chad Newell slays? He probably fucks all the thick hoes who get their self-esteem wrecked by the speed dating rejection. Uh, you know, I'm going to agree with you. I think he's probably fucking every one of them. That's, maybe he might have stumbled on the greatest idea that a dude has ever come up with. Set up a dating show at Comic-Con. Get all these chicks heartbroken and then fuck every one of them. <laughs> when their self-esteem is the lowest it could possibly be. Uh, guns down in hail. Jim found Fat Gaben's Twitter, but he hasn't tw tweeted since 2015. Press F and chat. Sad to learn. Sad to learn. From Bunnycorn. Daddy gave me a cavity. Fuck it hurts. Glad I'm not a nigger and can actually go get a tooth pulled by a professional. From Reno Miles. The black dude is lowering his standards because of his dark past. Okay, we've read that one. Two more came through. Read them real quick. Sheepdog speaks. 1776. Donga voice. Donga sends special smoke signal to Gem Tribe to say Donga defending champion. Donga beat Sweetie Tribe. Pants off, so get him off. 111 and 0. From Gray Haired Snake. Thanks for the quality morning entertainment. All right, well, that concludes the Superberry section. Hope you've all enjoyed the stream today. Remember, no matter how bad life gets, at least you're not these dudes. At least you're not at an IGN sponsored speed dating event at Comic Con where you're forced to stand against the wall of shame by an overweight Jedi who will shit-talk you for 30 minutes. It could be worse. It could be worse. Tune in next time. I'll uh, play some of the clips people had, read any messages I missed, and uh, we'll, we'll continue on tomorrow at 7, 8 in the morning, somewhere in there. Have a good day, chat, and I will see you later.